beautiful souls thank you so much for tuning in you are live with express my name is graham richards and a very good morning to you i'm zoe brown i hope you are ready for the week ahead because it is going to be a busy one leading up to probably the loveliest day of all <laughs> i'm talking about valentine's day yeah, valentine's is coming um we are all about that love you know that on the show we love to spread the love we love to spread positive energy so this valentine's day it's about loving everybody whether you're single or not it's about sharing love about sharing in the joy of this day. Um, so we're going to hopefully inspire you probably throughout this entire week. We're going to get into the fields with some singing, I have no doubt. But we are feeling loved up and we're going to have a lot of fun. Jeremy Harris has stepped into the building. Busy weekend in the sporting world. Tom Brady, of course, uh, completing a seventh Super Bowl win early this morning um, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, well so really done. looking forward to getting into all of our weekend sporting permutations and having a lot of fun. That's right. And of course, if you are looking for some value, Valentine's Day gifting ideas we've got you sorted if you're wondering what to do and cook up in the kitchen we're going to show you how to create and put the perfect picnic for two together oh, no. that and a whole lot more coming up on your feel-good breakfast show um, but first let's commiserate with one man who must be feeling so devoid of love this morning a little bit out in the cold like a season is just nosedived a very good morning <laughs> Mr. Ryle De Mornay <laughs> oh, this, this, man. this man comes through on a Monday and just rubs salt in Monday the wounds ha, I am so fed up but you guys will hear more about that with G and Jeremy Harris in the sport review later I'm not going to talk about Liverpool's <laughs> match I am going to say good morning to you beautiful souls my name is Ryle De Mornay and thank you for joining us this morning and on the left hand side the illustrious Yes. Top of the morning to you, <laughs> South Africa. Welcome to a brand new week, a Monday on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Yes, like Zoe and G said, it's all about love this week. We're going to be celebrating. We can finally say together, Valentine's Day is coming. Yes. It is yeah, it's coming on Sunday. So, of course, we're giving you all the inspiration for this week and how to celebrate love this week. But also, we're asking you on our social media platform, if there's a song you'd love to sing to your partner for <laughs> Valentine's Day, what would that song be, Ryle? You, between the two of us, you have a partner, so you oh, have so to Oh, so you're just us. not going to answer I can't this question? Who, who I'm going to sing it to, to myself. Nice. No. <laughs> you're, you're meant to be. <laughs> I would like, uh, I'm an old school kind what? of G, you know, okay. you know, like the romance. I'd do like, uh, what's that one that did that? Let me get in the zone, yeah. Two hearts, two hearts that beat as one. Our story's just begun. Remember that one? No? Anybody? I, Mzanzi, let me know if you're feeling my vibes oh, this morning. That is a perfect way to start the Monday, and I really feel like your partner would appreciate you singing that song. Maybe you can get a few tips from Jared Lee yes. uh, a bit later on. Yes. It's My Endless Love. I just remembered the name. Is, I think yes, that, that's the name of the song. Mzanzi, let me know if I'm correct, of course. And of course, let us know what your song would be that you'd sing to your partner on our social media channels. But before we kick it off with the rest of the magic, let's find out what's happening first up in the news with G. Uh, thank you, team. I'll start with your national news. In a statement released by Wits University yesterday, trial investigators said although the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine had high efficiency against the original coronavirus, it provided minimal protection against the mild to moderate COVID-19 symptoms from the variant first discovered in South Africa. Lead investigator Professor Shabir Madi said the findings forced them to recalibrate thinking about how to approach the virus. Madi said the focus should shift from the goal of herd immunity to the protection of all at-risk individuals in the population. South Africa obtained a million doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine last week. And staying with local news, Zulu King Goodwill Zuelentini has been placed in intensive care unit due to unstable glucose levels. In a statement released yesterday, Prince Mangosutu Butelezi said over the past weeks, several unstable glucose readings raised concerns and the king had to seek medical attention. He has assured the Zulu nation that Zuelentini is receiving the necessary care for his condition and the Minister of Health, Zuelim Kize, has been fully briefed. 
We now move to news abroad where US President Joe Biden has pledged to rebuild his country's partnership with the African Union. His predecessor, Donald Trump, sparked a row in 2018 over his alleged use of a derogatory word to describe African nations. Biden said his administration is committed to rebuilding its partnership around the world and re-engaging with international institutions such as the African Union. He also pledged to engage the AU in addressing conflicts on the continent. Continent. And staying with news abroad, events in Myanmar with a population of some 54 million has seen its largest protest in almost two decades as tens of thousands of people this weekend rallied against the military coup and demanded the release of elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Crowds chanted that they don't want dictatorship but democracy. A day-long blackout was imposed after the military blocked access to Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to stop people mobilizing. The military has not yet commented on the growing opposition to last week's coup. And now news of what a four-year-old brought back from the woods. Stephanie Brown from Ragged Beach in the U.S. state of Virginia had the surprise of her life when her four-year-old son Dominic headed out to the woods at a resort during a family holiday and brought back a baby deer which he had befriended. Shocked mom Stephanie managed to take a picture of the unique moment and shared it on Facebook where it quickly went viral. People were impressed by how at ease the fawn looked in the presence of the four-year-old. Stephanie explained that the family had been packing to leave and head back home when Dominic showed up with his new friend. The Facebook picture shows Dominic in his Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer pajamas next to the baby deer on the porch of the holiday apartment. The pair looked perfectly at ease with each other and the fawn seemed to, in no hurry to head back to the woods. Stephanie says she asked Dominic to walk his friend back to the woods so that it could be reunited with its own mother. Well, on that sweet note, that's where I leave your morning headlines. Let's hope the sport world is just as sweet. Well, it certainly has gotten sweeter after the action this weekend. South Africa fighting back into contention in that second test against Pakistan on day four at the Ural Pindi Cricket Stadium. Aidan Markram and Rossi van der Dissen unbeaten at the crease as the Proteas reached stumps on 127 for one yesterday. That leaves South Africa with 243 runs to win and to level that series one all. The second test between Pakistan and South Africa will continue from this morning, 7 a.m. Staying with cricket, the Dolphins and the Lions were both crying. Momentum One Day Cup champions after the competition final was rained out after 55.2 overs at Semves Park in Potterstrom on Friday. The final was initially scheduled to take place on Thursday, but the match was abandoned without a ball being bowled due to heavy rain. The result means that the Dolphins have retained the One Day Cup trophy they won last season, even if they have to share it. And on to rugby, massive shock this weekend. Scotland claimed a first win at Twickenham since 1983 after overcoming reigning Six Nations champions England. 11-6 on Saturday. Wing Duan van Amerva scoring the only try of the match and returning fly half Finn Russell starred on the day to guide Scotland to the victory and the Kolkata Cup. Other Six Nations results saw France absolutely dominate, scoring seven tries to thrash Italy 50-10 and then Wales defeating Ireland 21-16. Bringing it back home, Kaiser Chiefs crashed out of the Nedbank Cup after losing 2-1 to Richards Bay FC at the FNB Stadium last night. Sion Bonga Villani scoring a stoppage time winner to guide his team to the Net Bank Cup round of 16. In other results, Orlando Pirates beat Untongati FC 1 0 Cape Town City. They recorded an impressive 4 0 win over fellow Premiership outfit Blum Celtic. And then Swallows FC edged out Cape United 1 0. There'll be just one Net Bank Cup fixture today. That's as Barocca FC take on Cape Town Spurs, kicking off at 5 p.m. Then staying with the beautiful game, log leaders Manchester City thrashed defending champions Liverpool 4. 1 in their English Premier League clash at Anfield last night. Reds goalkeeper Alison Becker's stray passes leading to goals by Ilkay Gundogan and Raheem Sterling. Phil Foden was the star on the night, slotting in a fourth and absolute cracker as Man City extended their lead at the top of the standings. Now the results, Everton came from behind to draw three all in a thriller against Manchester United and Tottenham Hotspur ended a three-game losing streak in the league with a 2-0 win over West Bromwich Albion. And then finally on to American football. 
football and history being made in the early hours of this morning. Super Bowl 2021 saw Tom Brady at age 43 guide the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to a comfortable in the end 31-9 victory over the Kansas City Chiefs. The 43-year-old Brady has now extended his record to seven Super Bowl wins and 10 appearances. That's more wins than any other footballing franchise in the country. Brady threw three touchdown passes to prevent the Chiefs from becoming the first back-to-back -back NFL champions. But we'll delve a little more into that on all of our weekend sport with Jeremy Harris in just a moment. So stick around right now. Let's see what the weather has in store. Thank you, Graham. Well, we love to hear from our lovely viewers, which is you. And this morning, we start off with Kevi D. Morisane that sent us this cloudy and moody morning from his area. We then move over to Durban, where Louise G. Cherry shared this picturesque sunrise. Now, what a way to start the day. Thank you so much. If you are in Durban today, expect a maximum temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. And while we enjoy experiencing a sunrise from your part of South Africa, we do have some international viewers tuning in on both YouTube and the Africa channel in the USA. So this morning we report on the weather from Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta is the capital city of Georgia as well as the most populous city of the state. Our viewers from this city can expect pleasant conditions with times of sun and cloud today with a maximum of 15 degrees Celsius. Some quick weather news with incessant rainfall expected to continue for the next few days. Residents of four provinces have been warned to be on the alert for localized flooding. The South African Weather Service has issued a yellow moderate level 2 warning for disruptive rains over Gauteng, Limpopo, the Northwest and KwaZulu-Natal. The Joburg Emergency Service has urged residents and motorists to be cautious as flooding was expected in some areas. And in Mpumalanga, where heavy rains continue to wreak, hov wreak havoc in different parts of the province, the local government Mandla Msibi said with most rivers in flood and dams above 90% capacity, communities in those areas remain at high risk. He warned people not to cross rivers and dams, saying some so, saying doing so was a tragedy waiting to happen. Kanya Mazane in Mbumbela was the worst affected by flooding with roads and bridges collapsing and homes being washed away. Please be safe and we'll continue to keep you updated, but let's quickly take a look at your temperatures. Firmpula Kwane, partly cloudy conditions today with a low of 17, a high of 26. Mbumbela, 22 with a high of 30. Pretoria, partly cloudy, reaching a high of 27. Johannesburg, 17, 25. Mahiking, thunder showers can be expected with a low of 18, a high of 27. Clarksdorp, 18, 31. Kimberley 20 with a high of 34. Bloemfontein partly cloudy reaching a high of 30. Richards Bay 23 reaching a high of 29. Peter Maritzburg 19 reaching a high of 24 with rain expected. If you're in Durban 23 with a high of 27. Wet conditions in Mtata today with a high of 21. East London 17 21. Craddock 13 32. If you're in Port Elizabeth today partly cloudy with a high of 25. George 14 reaching a high of 24. Cape Town sunny conditions with a low of 12 a high of 24. Worcester 14 reaching a high of 33. Sutherland 11 with a high of 30 and partly cloudy conditions in Uppington a low of 22 and a high of 38 degrees Celsius. That's where we leave your morning temperatures. If you have a beautiful sunrise photo that you'd love to share with us please do so on the Expresso Facebook page. Ah, thank you so much, Zoe. Mzanzi looking like it's on fire as usual, of course. Now, we've got some special people in the studio this morning. And last week, we asked you, Mzanzi, to choose which song Jared Ricketts and Rochelle Liederman should sing this morning on our Gospel Mondays. And of course, Mzanzi, you came through with the votes. And we have our two winning songs. And the names are Open the Hearts of My, Open the Eyes of My Heart and Waymaker. Yes. Mm. We'll talk about the first song. So the, the first song is the contemporary Christian song, Open the Eyes of My Heart. It was written by Paul uh, Belosh and based on Ephesians 1 verse 
18 and the song was chosen because it speaks of opening your spiritual eyes and also your heart to focus on God's spirit and that is why the first song was chosen. Yeah, and then secondly we've got the second track being Waymaker. Now it was written by Nigerian gospel singer Sinash and released as a single in December 2015. Now as we face many challenges brought on by the coronavirus, this contemporary gospel song talks of God being a waymaker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper and a light in the darkness. I absolutely love it. But let's hear from the man himself, Jared Ricketts. Yes. How are you doing this morning? Really good. Always happy to be back here for Gospel Mondays. You I know, know. This is the perfect way to start the week. Um, yeah, an, an amazing time to just, um, just recognize what God is still doing out there and that He's still present in our lives. And I'm honored to have my friend Rochelle Liedemann here. She's our household name in the gospel music industry. And um, this is such an, an amazing platform that Expresso has created for yeah. all of us to be able to praise God together. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speak to us about those two songs. Why did you choose those two specific songs? I think they both speak to that reassurance that God is still with us, you know. Even me, I've lost family and friends and it's been so disheartening. But in all of that, I think it's important to recognize that God is executing His plan. He, mm. he, we are fulfilling our purpose here. And these songs just remind me that God is around, He's carrying us, and um, He reveals His face to us all the time, whether it's through the frontline workers, whether it's through your gorgeous faces, greeting people every morning. Let us not forget that God has allowed us to step into our purpose every day so that we can comfort those um, who need that positive message. And that's what the songs mean to me. Ah, I absolutely love it, Jared. It seems like you're fulfilling a purpose and you brought some reinforcements. Some Zanzi, stick around, of course. It's Gospel Monday right here on the Expresso Show, and we've got the very best delivering all that you need. <laughs> It's my feel-good worth the show. Welcome back. You're live with Expresso as we delve into our weekend sport. The Proteas are fighting back against Pakistan to leave the second test match. Now pretty open on day four in Ralpindi. The Dolphins and the Lions were both crowned for Momentum One Day Cup winners. I think the rain was actually the winner after no result came from the final day due to that heavy rain. Scotland ended a 38-year drought for a win at Twickenham after beating England in the Six Nations competition. Our trusted sports experts, Jeremy Harris, is here to tell us all about some of those sports.
sporting highlights from the weekend, and there were many. What a great weekend. Plenty of sporting weekend, um, action rather, of the weekend. Um, let's start with the one that really does affect us. I kind of thought we had let it slip. I, I thought anything over 300 would just be too much to chase, looking at the, the lack of depth, depth shown in our batting lineup. And then all of a sudden, we're now sitting on 120 odd for, for one. How are you feeling about day four? Well, look, 243 in a day's play uh, is very doable. So, I mean, they, they mathematically, technically, <laughs> they, they should be able to chase it Don't down. Don't jinx us now. Absolutely. Don't jinx us now. Uh, but, I mean, as you say, it was a, it was a good, composed um, uh, start for, for the Proteas in that second innings. They're chasing a big score, but, as a, you know, they've got 243 left, and they've put themselves in a good position. The platform has been laid. I was a bit nervous when, when Algo went because he, he's got the ability yeah, he's a, to absolutely an park anchor. a bus and stay there for hours and hours. So when he was gone, uh, I was a bit anxious. But, I mean, look at them now. 127 um, for one. When we go into the innings before that, obviously Rizwan, brilliant century in front of his home crowd, and he's been batting well. I think he, you know, probably one of their, their best batsmen at the moment. But missed opportunities in the field, which is unusual for South Africa. Maharaj, the workhorse, bowling a ridiculous amount of overs, getting some great turn. Five dropped catches. Yes, yeah. and I don't think that uh, uh, that you're going to find um, you know any of those players will be very happy with that bowling, uh, fielding performance. I think you've the one. Thing that the South Africans have prided themselves over the years has been the fact that they are probably one of the best fielding teams in world cricket. But wow, on that performance, not uh, not so much. Uh, Daryl Cullinan highlighting the fact that maybe something wrong in the way that we're training these guys because it's you know that close to the bat, it's technique. It's not so much talent, it's technique. It's what you train day in, day out. So maybe yeah. something to look at there um, and take nothing away from a five for George Linder with a dislocated finger in the Wow, process. I mean, think about the the kind of sort of story that it that it uh, that he, you know he had to undergo or the, the the route to that because I mean at one stage they were thinking well we've got to go for X-rays. He might not even be able to play anymore. Uh, and there he is, five wickets. Uh, and, uh, strap me up, strap, strap me up, up coach. I'm going we'll back, back in. in, I'm going back in. And he did it, man. <laughs> yeah. So South Africa needing 243 runs for the win there. And I think we can do that in one day. Momentum one day cup. Uh, wah, wah, wah. So sad. Yeah, look, I mean, they'd been having, what, three or four days of continuous rain. It had disrupted so many other matches. Uh, and we had a sense when you and I spoke on Friday that, mm. you know, rain might have the last laugh. Um, so the Dolphins, in essence, retain the title. But they just got to share it now share with their best time. mates, the Lions. Uh, okay. Take nothing away <laughs> from that rivalry. But kudos, I think, to both teams. And the Lions for playing so well consistently throughout the yeah. tournaments as well. I think they deserve to be in that final. And maybe they deserve to get a share of the spoils. Let's hop across the pond. Six wow. Nations. I never expected to enjoy the Six Nations as much as I did opening weekend. What a statement made. Adding a 36-year drought. 38-year 30, year drought. Yeah. That Scotland haven't been able to get the win over England, a very strong English side at Twickenham. But they did it for a number of reasons. Obviously, we saw France absolutely um, destroy the Azuria earlier in the day. Seven tries for a 50-pointer. But let's focus on the game of the weekend. I mean, what, did England implode? Was Scotland just amazing on the day? It was a time, it was a proper test match. It was gritty, it was hard. Exactly. Back. For me, Finn Russell with the boot, absolutely amazing. What I, what I liked about the game was that um, Scotland went to play slightly more expansive uh, rugby, so it wasn't for them necessarily always going to be the kind of attrition rugby that you see from test rugby. For England, they seemed to stick to their game plan, which was... They couldn't adjust, yeah. Which was kicking, and they just never, they never adjusted from that. Even when there was that opportunity, that extra man, they just never adjusted. There was one time that there was like five or six men with a three-man overlap for England, and they decided to kick the ball. Um, so for me, I thought, well, you know, this suggests a slightly different approach. And I mean, you can be sure that, uh, that Eddie Jones is going to go back to the drawing room yeah. or maybe just well, look at South African, actually. <laughs> yes, <laughs> what, what are you guys up to? Why are you kicking possession away? Yeah. Um, let's talk about the kicking game. Stuart Hogg returned with interest. Almost every single kicking encounter was one his kick into position, his kick to depth, brilliant mastery of the game from yeah. the captain. Yeah. No, I mean, i got to say that it just felt to me a little bit like, like Scotland had a point to prove. There was there was a different edge to it from their side and they were not happy with 30, the uh, 38 years uh, and not a W behind the name. I'm hoping that Duane van der is Dutch and not <laughs> South African. He's letting be South African. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, a monster, an absolute behemoth on the wing there and he was kind of the deciding factor in the end. His strength over the ball, knocking Vinipola, knocking forwards off him. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. No, as I say, for, for me, uh, Scotland came there with, with maybe having been fed a whole lot of raw meat or something uh, and there was just an edge to their to their gameplay to their passion uh, to their commitment
management and to their execution. And I mean, uh, the try also proves that as well. Wales getting the win over Ireland, a memorable one for mm. them, 21-16 as well. That's where we're going to leave it for now. We're going to get into a plethora of footballing action a little bit later this morning. And of course, the Super Bowl, Tom Brady for the seventh win. Unbelievable sports anchor Jeremy Harris will be taking us through all of those footballing highlights from the weekend in just a moment. Uh, absolutely love the banter, gentlemen, and of course we will be chatting about the dreaded football later on the show. <laughs> so stick around for that, but for something a little bit more nature boy, now it's the rising, well, let's talk about this, it's rising I think 1,086 meters exactly, and that's above sea level. Now it's Table Mountain, which is Cape Town's <coughs> most recognizable landmark, and it's more than just a representation of Cape Town, it's also home to an immense amount of fauna and flora native only to the area. Now the mountain's a abundance of biodiversity coupled with one-of-a-kind landscape creates a truly rewarding hiking experience if I do say so myself. Now with our public <coughs> parks and beaches reopened, hiking through our national parks is a great way to keep the body active while spending leisure time with family this summer. And now we've got someone special in the building. His name is Robert Fanzel. He's a 71-year-old hiking enthusiast, a testament to the magnetism that these hiking trails have. Having hiked up Table Mountain, wait for it, no less than 1,000 times. Yes, Mzanzi, you heard correctly. And Robert is joining us in studio this morning. Robert. Yes. A thousand <laughs> summits. Wow. Wow. Man, Thanks. come on. Oh, take a bow. Take a bow. <laughs> Thank wow. you. Wow, wow, wow. Jamie yes. and I have been on a hiking journey yeah. this year, and she's been just exploring this incredible mountain that we have. On our doorstep. On our doorstep. Yeah. No yeah. excuse not to, but a yes. thousand times. Man, wow. i got to say congratulations. Thank How are the you. legs feeling, though, today, firstly? No, my legs are fine. fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that that is so crazy. Like Rao was saying, we just, I started a couple weeks ago yes. this, uh, this weekend has been my fourth hike but a thousand times I can't even imagine but I'll take it back you started in 2002 your first ever hike was yes. Table Mountain yes w what in your right mind would you go I want to start hiking but I want to do Table Mountain and that's going to be going to be my first hike take us through that let me take you through that quickly <laughs> um, in January 2002 uh, my eldest daughter Lee first of January said to me let's go hike Table Mountain I've been living in Goodwood my whole life, looking at the mountain. I said, no, people get injured, people die on the mountain. I hear stories. She said, no, crazy, man. I know people at work that hike and come and let's go do it. So we didn't even know where to start. We got in a car. We rode through from Goodwood. We went to Constantia Neck because I used to run marathons. I knew the route up in the back there. And we started at Constantia Neck, went up the Jeep track around the dams in yes. the top, came down again, and that was the start of it all. Every weekend after that, the bug bit me, and you get such a full body workout on a mountain, and it is so nice to be there, and it's there for everyone to use, and that's how I fell in love with it. And it's it's a it's a it's the biggest open air gym in the world. Yeah. You don't have to pay any money to go to a gym. <laughs> it's there. Just climb on a mountain, walk. Cape Townians get up on a mountain. Doesn't matter what age. I see people every weekend with their families, with their kids of six, seven, eight years old, going to the top of the mountain. Myself, I'm 71. I'm a living testament of yeah. how fit you can stay and how you can use the mountain. Now, I'm not saying people my age must start doing hectic hikes but start slowly and smally uh, walk on a mountain in the end you'll end up hiking it you fall in love with it <laughs> now Robert I, I know there's so many reasons and so many ways we could justify why you're doing what you're doing but obviously the bug bit in 2002 yes. what then led to you deciding I want to do this mm. 999 <laughs> times more yes. to hit that thousand mark and I mean I can speak of the beauty the workouts yes. that you mentioned but what really is it that's keeping you and has kept you there for a thousand journeys okay the the simple answer to that, it wasn't all about how many hikes I'm going to do. It was never about that. I log all my hikes, and that's how I got to a 1,000. I thought to myself, well, it's going to be a landmark at my age. And um, it's, it's, it's just to be there on the mountain. It's such an easy way of staying fit. Um, you see beautiful scenery away from all the cars and the smog, mm. the marathon running years, you're always training on the roads, you get all that smog. Now you're in nature and it's a half an hour's ride from my house to where I start, Platte Club Gorge normally, and then it's an hour up 
and then another half an hour with a cable car down to save on my knees. And uh, that's it. And, and, and it's fun being there every weekend. And I'm pushing myself and I will carry on until I feel I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I, I don't know when that's going to be. And Robert, I kid you not, I promise you it is addictive. You do want to go back for more, but yes. is there a goal that you, you're now setting for yourself? You've obviously reached a peak, a yes. thousand. Uh, what next with regards to the hiking space? Um, I'll just carry on doing it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm 71. I don't know what I'm going to look like when I'm 80 and I'm still hiking. Maybe, maybe not. It's just being positive, stay fit. And people sitting on their stupid home with a beer in a hand, cigarette, looking at the mountain, don't do that. Put it down. Come and hike. You're going to love it. And you're going to get fitter and you're going to love it more. Oh, I love it. Robert, well, there you go, guys. It's Robert in the building. He has just completed 1,000 summits of Table Mountain, and he's just told you exactly why you should get involved, too. Stop looking at it. You don't have to look. You can also touch. You can feel. You can experience. And later on, I'm going to be joining Robert, and we're going to take you guys through something that we think is going to get you prepped for one incredible hiking experience. So it's going to be the fitness workout that you need to get the body in shape to maybe even for yourself attempt 1,000 hikes. What do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> we'll stick around for that. We'll be doing it later in the show and enjoy the rest. <laughs> Welcome back. Of course, you're still locked in. It's your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And no, don't be fooled. I'm not about to leave early and head into the mountain. We are about to do a workout. Now, before the break, we sat down with 71-year-old hiking enthusiast, Robert Fanzel, who summited Table Mountain one thousand times. Oh yes, that's right, you heard it correctly. Now, we're so glad you're in the studio with us and an ex-marathon runner still keeping healthy and fit is an absolute inspiration. So I know you like being inside, we love 
not necessarily always going to the gym, but finding other ways to do so. So I've created something a little bit different for you to do, which is different to the normal routine, and myself and Robert think that this is the perfect way for everybody out there, you and Zanzi as well, to get your hiking flow going, of course. And we're gonna work all the muscles that you need to conquer your first summit. Robert, you ready? This yes, is gonna be like yes, talking to these child's <laughs> place for you. So the first exercise, which I thought, I get creative with this workout, and we don't always need equipment, and like you yes. mentioned, we have that beautiful playground. Yep. So let's use what we have, and we all have a hiking bag yes. or a bag of sorts. So let's use that as our weight, and it's also good prep and conditioning for when we're actually in the mountain with our bag. Okay. And you can testify to this, that there is no one step that's the same in the mountain, correct? That's correct. You're often <laughs> leaning and turning, and the core's gotta yes. work quite a bit. So let's play on that exact movement. So what we're gonna be doing is something called the 360 degree lunge. So Mzanzi, you guys can join in with this. Put some water in your backpack and make it heavier. You can put some books in there once you finish reading them, of course. Um, but the heavier the bags, obviously the better. So what we're gonna be doing, uh, Robert, you and I can show the, the, the rest of the world out at home. So we're gonna first go for a forward lunge. We're gonna okay. take our right foot, keeping our core engaged, and step forward for a lunge, right? So that's our front lunge. The knee goes down to the ground, nice and slowly. That eccentric load's gonna help quite a bit. And then we go straight back up. Now, we go for reverse lunge. So right behind us, reverse lunge. That's gonna work the quads and the glutes once again. And then we explode up, just like we would when we're climbing a mountain. Now it gets a bit technical, of course, because we aren't always going forward and backwards. Let's go to the side. So we start with a curtsy lunge now. Same right foot going to the side behind your leg. There you go, nice and slow. And see if you can get that leg to go down to the ground. Nice mobility, brother. Now let's go straight back up. And then the last one's a Cossack squat. Now I know a lot of the times you have to make those big leaps in the mountain, nice. right, Robert? Okay. So you have gotta get a big leap and you have gotta have your groin and everything else stretch out quite a bit, so we're gonna do a Cossack squat for the last one. So we take that right leg and go to the side now, and we go for a Cossack squat, and you go all the way down, yep, and then all the way up, and you'll feel that in the groin there. I don't know about you, feel it, yeah. it? Can yeah. feel it. And then straight back up. How was that for you? That's great. Not a mountain, <laughs> but it's a good warm up, yes. right? <laughs> so let's show Mzanze at home the rest of the workout on the other side. So let's use our left leg again. So remember, we're going for 360 degrees. First one's forward, all right, Robert, let's show them. Forward for a lunge, good control, now explode straight up. Nice, now it's a reverse lunge. This is obviously working the glutes. We work in the hemis and the quads as well and straight back up. Now we're going to isolate that glute even more with a curtsy all the way to the side. Yeah, and straight back up again. It's too easy for this man. He's not even sweating. <laughs> and then a Cossack for our last one. All the way down. You and at home, you will feel a stretch in the groin there. That is a good thing. You want range of motion and power when you're hiking. If you want to do this a thousand times, you can't just power through. You need your recovery as well, which is vitally, vitally important. All right. So next <laughs> exercise. You ready for this one? I'm I thought, ready. especially when we climb the mountain, and especially when I take guys out, Robert, I don't know about you, but what's the first few muscles that kind of start to feel the burn? It's the legs, right? It's the legs right here. Yeah, exactly. So what I thought is, let's work that component. So you're talking about the calves, yes. and I've got to mention, man, I noticed an incredible tattoo over there on your calf. I don't even want to show him Zanzi, and I believe you actually That was got done that. last week. Last week? My first tattoo ever. Oh, nice. Beautiful <laughs> stuff. We've got the, the, the outline of Table Mountain there, which I absolutely love. So we're going to grab our bags now, right? So let's remember, um, we're going to pretend to be doing a deadlift, okay? Yes. But it's one leg, so it's a single leg deadlift. And again, we're using our bag for the weight. Okay. So what we really want to do is have the bag on our outside, right leg on the ground, left leg in the air, all right? So the left leg's just behind me. Now I'm going to slowly let the bag go down to the ground, but with, with keeping my arm nice and straight. So all the way down to the ground, you stick your back leg out to the back of you. You don't want me to fall. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Try not fall over. Okay. This is where the balance comes through and then standing straight back up again with that leg. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, yes. So you can just rest your hand down to the ground. There we go. And then straight back up again. Up. So you will feel a little bit of a stretch behind yes. the leg. And that's the hamstring and the glute. <laughs> and that's something I feel, especially when we're climbing, often you're leaning over, yes. trying to make those big lunges. You're working your core muscles. Exactly, yeah. Robert. Now that is where I lead to my last exercise, which I know you're gonna love. And it's a core workout. So we're yes. gonna go to the ground now, using our bags now as a weight. Okay. What we're gonna be doing is something called, well, it's just a good core workout. So essentially we're gonna hold the bag and let it touch the side of your body. Now okay. you wanna have a little bit of a bend in the legs and you have two options here, Mzanzi. So the easiest option would be keeping your feet on the ground and rotating the bag from either end of your body. This is gonna work the core, this is gonna work the abs and also a little bit of the arms. But if you wanna make it even harder, Robert, what we can try to do is keep our legs in the air. So this is balancing and moving the bag over. Okay. Let's see if we can do that. Oh man, that's I possible. I can't break this man. <laughs> a thousand hikes in, there's nothing that's going to be un <laughs> undefeatable for Robert. Brother, thank you so much. I don't know how the core's feeling over there. You feeling that's the burn? Fine. 
Well, brother, I can't thank you enough for joining us in the studio. Of course, a thousand summits, that's no easy feat. And of course, after something like that, you need to refeed the belly. So I believe you're going to be cooking up something special. Uh, yes, my, my wife is not going to believe it when she sees this because <laughs> I never cook. <laughs> All right, well, Zanzi, you heard it. Robert Van Zell is going to head to the kitchen for something special. <laughs> and I know you worked out and earned it. Let's go, brother. Okay. <laughs> it's certainly going to be special. And I can tell you, we are keeping it healthy this Monday morning on your Feel Good Breakfast show. And as you've just heard this very inspirational story from hiking enthusiast Robert Van Sale, well, he is about to really come and show us how to make a delicious smoothie. At the age of 71, he was able to climb Table Mountain for at least 1,000 times. I wish I can reach that number. And after a fitness workout with Ral, I think it's only fair to replenish the body with some nutrients. So I'm going to ask Rob to join me in, in, in the kitchen and we're going to really have some fun with whooping up a kale and baby spinach smoothie. How was that workout? That was lovely. I like that. <laughs> but you're probably strong enough to do all of the things for hiking as the way you've been doing yes. it. Yes. Okay. Now I know that we've got some fresh ingredients here in front of us. I see the kale, I see the spinach, and you're about to whip up a powerful smoothie for us. Okay. Is a smoothie something you start your morning off or do you do it more as a post hike? Um, post hike. Okay. Oh, post hike. Okay, cool. Do you want to talk us through this one that you've got here planned for us? Okay, what can I say? We've got some hair <laughs> over here. What's this, Kyle? Okay, uh, so we okay. can add some spinach. Okay. Yep. Some spinach. You can add so that where for do us. we throw it in here? Yes, throw it in there for <laughs> us. There we go. You can actually add all of the spinach. We've got to add some avo. Which is also great to just add the, the healthy okay, fats. Let's put some there. avo in here. The whole avo? Or yes, this? let's put the whole avo in. Okay, lovely avo. There we go. Yes, it is a beautiful avo. And there's something about using ingredients, especially your avos in season. I know as we head into winter, they become a little bit more affordable. A little bit go. of this? Yes, we're going to add, add, add lots of spinach. Okay. I would say add as much as you can. We've got an avo tree on our property. Go. It gives us the most beautiful avos. Oh, That's just... Let's add some kale. Okay. I, I would pack more. I would go pack for it. more green stuff. Stop messing like this. <laughs> And you know what's great about kale? It's, it is loaded with antioxidants and it can assist with lowering cholesterol. Yes. And what's amazing about spinach, I mean, it's rich in vitamin yes. A, which is good for bone health. Also vitamin A, which is great for your eye health and vitamin C as we head into winter for our immune system. Build, build I keep up the saying system. heading into winter, but we're only in fair. Yes. still pretty much summer. So there we go. And ginger? Then, yes, add some ginger. I love ginger the to whole the smoothie. Piece? I would add a whole piece. We want that Okay, kick. okay. You're gonna get a kick out of this. Yes, just just the one. Okay. And then we've got some almond milk here. Can okay, I which is very like healthy. Yeah. That. There we go. Adding some almond milk. And then the nice thing about this is we can really pack more greens into it. A little bit of lemon juice just to give it a bit of a zest. Okay. There we go. And then if you don't mind, I feel like we need to pack more. Okay. More Let's greens. Put some more greens in. We there have it here. Yeah. Why not? Pack it all in. Sounds very crunchy, so it must be good. <laughs> it is going to be good for us. And then just a little dash of water. There we go. Mm. So now we're going to simply blitz it up. And I need your honest opinion on what you think of this. Okay. Smoothie. There we go. Have you ever made one with such fresh, fresh ingredients? Not really. Blitz it up. And we do have this recipe available for you. You can find it on expressoshow.com and then we can serve it up. So this is one with a bit of texture in it. There we go. Let me give you that That's one. It. All of the goodness. There we That's go. It. it looks nice and green. <laughs> it is a green smoothie packed with all the <laughs> things that we need. There we go. Cheers. Mm. Very good. You can taste the avo. A lot of ginger coming through. Not too you can much. Can taste not the avo. I love the. I love avo. Mm. Yeah, avo is always a winner. Mm. Well, we do have this recipe available for you. Check it out at expressoshow.com. Nice. Nice. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs>
It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. Let's dive right back into our sporting action over the weekend, continuing with our weekend sports review. Sports anchor and expert and all around nice guy Jeremy Harris is still with us. Uh, it was a disappointment for Kaiser Chiefs, who crashed out of the Nedbank Cup yesterday, courtesy of Richards Bay. Well done. Man City were victorious in the English Premier League clash against defending champions Liverpool. It must be said at Anfield, uh, Klopp's third straight loss at Anfield. I, I don't know if that's ever happened in history. Yeah. Maybe you can correct me there. But let's start with the Nedbank Cup. We wanted some David and Goliath scenarios and we got it. Some incredible performances from our Minnow teams. Um, let's start with one that we expected, Orlando Pirates dominating their through to the last round of yeah. 16. They beat uh, Utangati 1-0. Uh, um, and I mean, to, to the credit of the let's call it the smaller club, the smaller team. I mean, they certainly gave a, a good account of themselves. They went through, uh, did, did Pirates, but uh, it wasn't, uh, you know, plain sailing like they maybe had, uh, had hoped for. Yeah, and that's what we love about cup competition. The only all-premiership battle was Cape Town City up against uh, Punya Sele Sele. 4-0 wow. over from Celtic. That is a victory on any field. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at uh, some of the, uh, uh, the, the banter afterwards and also the, the reaction from the coach, Jan Olderikering, who was going so proud. Really good polished performance from the team. Very efficient stuff. Yeah, let's hope they can take that into the league. We saw Golden Arrows losing out to Benny McCarthy's Amazulu 4-5 after they were one apiece in extra time. Swallows got the win over Cape United, but the big one, I'm going to call it a shock because it is yeah. a massive shock. Gavin Hunt left reeling after this one. Kaiser Chiefs going down 1-2. Yes, they needed a goal in um, you know, added time to be able to do that. But Richards Bay, and we were joking about you guys, I'm so sorry, yeah. on Friday, but what, what? A win. But you know, Graham, that's that's the whole thing about these cup competitions is that you've got just for one game, it doesn't have to be the whole season, so just for one game, it's two teams that play each other, doesn't matter where they've come from, they've got to play against each other for 90 minutes or 120 minutes, whatever it is, <laughs> and anything can happen. Um, and, and they've made it. They've done it, man. Richards Bay must be a very happy place right now. <laughs> um, let's hop across the pond as we do and look at the English Premier League. Unfortunately for every other team now, it, it feels like we know who's going to take the league title now. Um, they look unstoppable. 14 wins on the trot now. I think it's 10 or 11 on the trot in the, the Premier League. Their defensive record is the best in the league at the moment. Man City looking absolutely sublime. But let's take it back a step. Aston Villa up against Arsenal. Yes, very very contentious, um, you know, sort of uh, calls in the game. But it was a draw, but it was a spectacular draw. Manchester United looked sublime. Bruno Fernandes was one of the best shots you'll see ever in a season. What a fight back from Everton to draw that one 3-0. Yeah, now look, I, I did think that Everton were going to give uh, a good account in themselves. I did. Game losing streak with a 2-0 <laughs> win over West Bromwich. you've got a smile on your face. Yeah, and I didn't even watch the game. <laughs> I, I couldn't even bear to. Wolves Leicester drawing 0-0 and then the big one this weekend, an age-old rivalry that has in most cases, especially at Anfield, gone the way of the Reds. Liverpool going 1-4 down to Manchester City. They were outplayed in every facet of the game. They seem to have lost that decisive um, kind of instinct up front, maybe preoccupied with the losses, the break in balance in the team's makeup. But that takes nothing away from two glaring mistakes from, from Alisson and a phenomenal performance from me, especially Phil Foden. Boy, wonder what a difference he's making in that City team. Yeah. No, look, I mean, take nothing away, though, from Pep Guardiola. I mean, there's there's a lot of guidance coming through there. Um, you know, before the match, and even, we, you know, a few weeks ago, I was talking about the fact that Liverpool are not a team that have forgotten how to play football. Mm. They aren't suddenly a bad team, but, wow, they have lost their way just a little bit at the moment. And as you say, Man City have got their foot on the pedal. They control where this Premiership title will go. Completely. Gundogan also in the form of his life at the moment, despite missing a, a penalty, capitalising on two mistakes. They're getting two brilliant goals. Um, great to see Sterling back in the mix. Yep. They, they're all playing phenomenally well. Um, so a great weekend. That's the City now out in front with their, their heads, necks, shoulders out in front <laughs> of the rest of the field. Very quickly. Um, last night, obviously, I don't know if you got to watch the game, yep, yep. Um, but a phenomenal win for the Buccaneers over the Tampa Bay. Um, we Chiefs, we, I mean, the uh, uh, Tampa Bay Chiefs, we, we've... Tom Brady now, seven Super Bowl um, rings, 10 appearances at age 43. That's the number I'm most interested in. Yeah. Incredible. No, and I mean, just think about the fact that when he, he lost who with the Patriots, you know, people were going, isn't it time to maybe write a book and to retire and to, no. 
and he came right back and, and I mean, as you say, 7 out of 10. Uh, and, I mean, Patrick Mahomes, for all the hype around him, all oh, due respect to him. the MVP from the season. Yeah, yeah, he was schooled at the very highest level by, I mean, they called, they called Tom Brady the GOAT, and I think rightly so. He handed out a lesson uh, par excellence last night. And, in fact, the Buccaneers, the first team to win at home a Super Bowl final. And, of course, we had all the drama off the field as well, all of the photos of Kissy Kissy, all sorts of fantastic stuff. Do yourself a favor, go and uh, do a little bit of search of uh, Super Bowl 2021 to catch up with all of the action. Dude, thank you so much. Let's hope that next weekend heralds as much amazing sport and highlights. We'd love to have you on the couch if you're a fan, a super fan. Let us know. <laughs> Thank you very much, G-Man. Now from all of that sporting action to chatting to or about someone who's done such an incredible job in the field of sports and leadership, Hader Kamea, who uh, in primary school, when he was told uh, rather about, well, told a teacher he would one day become uh, the Springbok head coach, uh, uh, was an unbelievable story. Despite having very few people believe in him, he went on to study sports management and education, and he did just about everything right, everything he could to ultimately realize his dream of coaching his beautiful beautiful country. Indeed he did. Now in 2012 he was then appointed as the Springbok head coach and this morning the former book uh, coach turned author joins us via video call to talk about his new book titled Seven My Notes on Leadership and Life. Now this book is not an autobiography but rather explores the life lessons he learned over his coaching career with incredible highs and lows. Heineke Meyer, the legend, the man, the myth himself, how are you doing this morning? No, great. Thanks for the opportunity. I, uh, thanks for the kind words. I should join you guys more. It's very good to my ego. <laughs> uh, it's a big I honor think, to be here. You know? I, I think if you did, I, I just... remember Nick Ballett always said that, uh, <clears throat> you know, the longer you stop coaching, the better you get. It's like old players, you know. So uh, <laughs> I should have stopped a few years before because I'm getting better every every week, you know. <laughs> well, it's, a, uh, it's, it's a big honor. Thank you. It's a different type of spotlight that's being shown on you right now. But uh, thank you very much for making the time to join us this morning. Uh, let's get straight into it. Give us a bit of background. Uh, what inspired you to write a book? But uh, this particular book, Seven, My Notes on Leadership and Life. You know, when COVID hit um, at the beginning of last year, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I was thinking of writing a book or not, because obviously, as a coach, I don't like the limelight. I believe the player should be in the limelight. And I thought I want to actually move out of the limelight. And then I consider I've always, I've always coached to make a difference in people's lives. And then I decided this, I want, to, I want to really help people and make a difference. Mm. And I read a story that inspired me when uh, Muhammad Ali, which one of my favorites and, and, and inspiring people, he was fighting Sonny Liston and the whole world say that Ali couldn't beat Liston. Liston was an animal, uh, he's unbeatable. And then Ali fought against him and he was a total underdog. And then in the sixth round or fifth round, Ali wanted to stop because Sonny Liston used un unfair tactics. Uh, he could dip it on his, on his boxing gloves and hit uh, Ali in the face the whole time. So he wanted to quit. And then uh, Angela Dundee, his coach, said, you're not going to quit. Fight one more round. You know, go out there, fight one more round. That's all I'm asking of you. And in the sixth, Ali was quite good. And in the seventh round, uh, Sonny Liston threw in the towel. And nobody could believe it. The, the media, nobody could believe that Sonny Liston will quit. And Ali obviously was, was the champ. So to make a long story short, you know, I really thought I want to inspire people and make a difference and um, give out to people out there. And I think what is important, we South Africans, you know, we're going through bad times, mm. but um, yeah. if we stick together and fight one more round, we can overcome this. And what I didn't know was when I wrote the book uh, and uh, I had covid probably a month ago. So it also inspired me to go out there and fight one more round. And I said, I don't want to make, you don't make money out of books, believe it or not. But I said, if I get good feedback and I help one person out there, it doesn't matter who it is, not the leadership, it's just any, any human being out there, you know, I'll be inspired and I've made a difference and I've had unbelievable feedback. The book is in the top 10 of all bookstores and a number one selling uh, sports book. Wow. So uh, I really wow. think they make a difference and I think I've achieved that and I'm very proud of the, the writer, Marcus Buerta, has done a great job. Incredible. Well done on fighting yeah. and beating COVID. And I couldn't agree more, Annika. I think you have this knack of just coming to the nation, especially when we are in need and providing us with the, with the ingredients and the material to kind of just get us to smile at the end of the day. So I can't thank you for that. But now, again, speaking on this book, it, it touches on a few topics, of course, but one that you've highlighted is the Springboks heartbreaking loss uh, to Japan at the 2015 <coughs> Rugby World Cup. So what were some of the lessons learned from this big loss and why document this in your book? Yeah, because what I, what I wanted to show is that obviously, you know, coaches usually forget their losses. You know, they only want to show the, 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 the winning form. 
And uh, I actually want to go there and write it, you know, it's not about me. I want to be really, really objective and show people. I've studied all the successful people in the world, mm. and they all went through setbacks. I say it in Chapter 5, you are, you are going to have setbacks. You must come back from that. And what I learned from that lesson is I made mistakes. I move away from my authentic self and what I believe in, and I pay the price. But what, I, what the lesson in there is that, um, you know, we came together. I, I called all the players in, and uh, I let them look in the mirror. And the leaders bought into that. And I said, listen, we're Springboks. We must fight back from this. You know, we can't go out there and, and lie down. And I'm very proud of the way we came back and lost by two points against the best all-black team ever. And I don't want to take credit for, for what Russ has done. Russ has done a brilliant job. But this World Cup, they lost further against the All Blacks. They came back and they won the World Cup. And everybody said, you can't win a World Cup if you, lo if you lose one game. And I, I believe the lessons we've learned as a team and they, a lot of those players were still in the second World Cup and they've learned from that and come back and, and I'm so proud of them and proud of what Rossi and, and the whole nation has done. So it just shows you that uh, I really wanted to, to put myself out there and say, and say that, you know, we're even in life now. People are struggling in business. They're struggling in personal life. And, and it's, a, it's a tough time. Mm. But you have to go out there and fight one more round and things will change. So I really wanted to go out there and put myself, um, you know, almost like saying I've had a lot of successes and it's easy to speak about that. Mm. And, and I say that in a feeling way because it's, it's not me, it's the team. But you are, are going to have setbacks. You know, just look at the guy like Elon Musk. When he said he wants to put a rocket on Mars, everybody laughed at him. You know, the whole world laughed at him. And now he's done it. Yeah. So, yeah. But his first yeah. rockets yeah. exploded and everybody laughed. Yeah. So I'm just going to try yeah. and go out there and say, listen, you know, you are going to have setbacks. Uh, that's part of success. And it's not setbacks. It's, it's not mistakes. You only learn from that. So I've learned a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously, it's not great for the nation. And I, I always apologize for that because I take the responsibility. That, that's part of leadership. Yeah. But well, you, can't, you, can't, you can't let that keep you back to, to achieve and to fulfill your dreams. You know, I've been fired twice before I was 32. And at 32, I was the, I was the sports coach for Nick Ballett in the World Cup, which is, which is unbelievable. It's untrue. It's incredible. If I can do it. <laughs> um, I have to say, I have to say that, you know, it's incredible just hearing and listening to the story of this book, because what you've done is you've taken a step back and reflected on really a lifetime of a series of wins and losses, failures and, uh, and victories. Triumphs, yeah. And you've put them together in the most beautiful way in this book. Thank you very much for that. And it sounds like there is something for everyone out there to pick out of this book. Uh, but if you had to encourage someone to go out there and get this book, who would you say that this book is for and why should they get it? Yeah, I think what is the misconception is, you know, is leadership. You know, we wrote the book. It's a leadership book. Mm. But, you know, every single human being, I believe, is a leader in self of him. You know, I, I mm. believe the, the, the woman that stays or the lady that stays at home has got three kids and looking after a family. Sometimes they feel they don't have self-worth, but they are a leader. You know, they're inspiring kids that are going to be superstars or have a huge influence in life. So it's everybody out there that, that uh, needs inspiration, everybody out there that wants to fight one more round. And if I can quickly tell a story, I don't want to even waste too much time. In the 95 World Cup, um, you know, I was, I was under 16 coach, a schoolboy coach, but my dream was to coach my country and everybody laughed at me. And I said, you know, in the 99 World Cup, I want to be, I want to be part of that World Cup. Mm. And Sunlam came around and there was an insurance policy that you could pay to go to the World Cup. But obviously, I didn't have money as a teacher, so I didn't take the insurance policy. But I put these steps into place. And four years later, I wasn't, I wasn't a great player. I wasn't a great, uh, I wasn't in a university where those days you have to be a professor or well-known. I was a nobody from the wrong school in the wrong little town. And it, if I tell this to you, it's unbelievable. But in 95, I was a, I was a schoolboy coach. In 99, I was Nick Mallett's forwards coach at that World Cup, and I was 32 years old. So if I, if I tell you this, it's impossible, but I, I believe nothing is impossible. If you can dream big, it gives you energy, and you follow these steps, and you'll be successful. So if I can do it, and that's my message, go out there, ah. fight one more round, so anybody can do it. And this, is, this is usually for the youth. For anybody out there that needs inspiration, and uh, it's just simple principles, you know, it's, it's not rocket science, it's really simple, simple principles. Ah, this is the fuel we need. Thank ah, you so much for that. Ali Kamen, it's an absolute pleasure having you in the studio. Thank you so much. Of course, we all are here for it. Mm -hmm. One more round. And in Yum Zanzi, Seven Mind Notes on Leadership and Life is available right now from all leading book retailers. So you can get your hands on this incredible book written by former Springbok coach Heineke Mena, who is with us on the line. Heineke, again, man, thank you so, so much for this morning. Thank you, Amos. Thank you. It's, it's great speaking to you guys. Thanks for the kind words. And uh, I know it's tough out there, but uh, we South Africans, you know, we've overcome much, much worse uh, things. 
Yeah. And let's stick together. Let's help each other. Let's inspire each other. And uh, let's go and fight one more round and beat this thing. Oh, you heard it from the coach himself. Tap into that winning and fighting spirit. And if you'd like to uh, win yourself a copy, well, you're in luck because we have a copy up for grabs for you. All you have to do is go into our social media platforms. Tell us why. Why you deserve this book. And, and, and it's really that easy. Post your answers on our social media pages. Expresso Morning Show, SABC3 on Facebook, as well as at, at, at Expresso Show on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Now, the comp competition is open yeah. and the entries will close at 9 a.m. today you haven't got that much time and this I mean there's gonna be lots of entries so do go on to expressoshow.com if you want to see the terms and conditions good luck I'll just keep one this one round. safe for now this copy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Welcome back. You're live with Express. So the first hour has flown by. Two more to sink our teeth into. But first, let's get back into our official duties this morning, bringing you up to speed with what's been happening around the world and here in South Africa with Tabiso. Thank you very much, G-Man. Just after 7 o'clock, time for us to take a look at those news headlines. Starting off here in South Africa, where search and rescue operations are underway in Mbumalanga after severe flooding claimed the lives of at least eight people. Five others are missing. Among those missing and believed to have been swept away as a 13-year-old boy and families are helping disaster management teams in searching for their loved ones despite heavy rains hampering rescue efforts. The president, uh, rather the persistent rainfall has caused extensive damage in Pumalanga since tropical storm LOE spilled over to South Africa from Mozambique last month. Communities in floodline areas have cautioned to move to safer areas. In a statement released by Wits University yesterday, trial investigators and although the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine had high efficacy against the original coronavirus, it provided minimal protection against mild to moderate COVID-19 symptoms from the variant first discovered in South Africa. Lead investigator Professor Shabu Madi said that the findings forced them to recalibrate thinking about how to approach the virus. And Madi said that the focus should shift from the goal of herd immunity to the protection of all at-risk individuals. South Africa obtained a million doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine last week. In its national news, Cuba has announced it will allow private businesses to operate in most industries in what is a major reform of its state-controlled economy. Labor Minister Marta Elena Feito said that the list of authorized industries had increased from 127 to more than 2,000. Only a minority of industries would be reserved for the state. And Cuba's economy has been hit hard by the pandemic and U.S. sanctions introduced by the Trump administration. Meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden has pledged to rebuild his country's partnership with the African Union. His predecessor, Donald Trump, sparked a row in 2018 over his alleged use of a derogatory word to describe African nations. Biden said that his administration is committed to rebuilding its partnership around the world and uh, engaging with international institutions such as the Africa Union. He also pledged to engage the AU in addressing conflicts on the continent.
And now for news from the world of entertainment. No matter our age, we are all aware of the movie The Sound of Music. Now, the hit musical which millions worldwide flocked to see in the middle and late 60s. And now The Sound of Music star Christopher Plummer has passed away aged 91, but which a fantastic life lived. Of course, Plummer made his Broadway debut in 1953 and his career spent a remarkable seven decades. Now, the film version of Rogers and uh, Hammerstein's musical The Sound of Music, however, remains Plummer's most loved film. And his co-star was Britain's Dame Julie Andrews and set in, uh, in Austria in the late 1930s. It saw him play a widowed former naval officer who falls in love with the guardian Julie, uh, rather Julie Andrews who comes to look after his seven children. In 2012, Plummer was named Best Supporting Actor at the Academy Awards for his uh, performance as an elderly man who announces he is gay in the film Beginners. Now, the award saw the then 82-year-old become the oldest person ever to win a competitive Oscar in an acting category. And one of Plummer's last screen appearances was in 2019 in a comedy, Knives Out. May he rest in peace. And thank you very much for all the fantastic memories to him. That's where we leave it for now. Here is a look at what's happening in sports with Graham. Thanks, Tobi. So let's start with cricket. South Africa fought back into contention for the second test against Pakistan on day four at the Royal Pindi Cricket Stadium. Adam Markram and Rassi van der Dissen steadying the ship. They were unbeaten at the crease as the Proteas reached stumps on 127 for one yesterday. That means South Africa need a further 243 one runs to win and then level that series one all. The second test between Pakistan and South Africa will continue around about now, kicking off officially at seven in the morning. Staying with cricket news, but bringing it back home, the Dolphins Dolphins and the Lions were both crowned Momentum One Day Cup champions. That was after the competition final was rained out after 55.2 overs at Semves Park in the bubble in Potterstrom on Friday. The final was initially scheduled to take place on Thursday, but the match was abandoned without a ball being bowled due to heavy rain. The result means that the Dolphins have retained the One Day Cup trophy that they won last season. Then a massive weekend in European rugby. Scotland claimed a first win at Twickenham since 1980 three after overcoming reigning Six Nations champions England 11-6 on Saturday. Wing Duan van Merva, he scored the only try of the match and returning fly half Finn Russell starred on the day to guide Scotland to the victory and the Calcutta Cup. Other Six Nations results saw France dominant, scoring seven tries to thrash Italy 50-10 and then Wales defeating Ireland in a hard-fought battle 21-16. Then a shock in local football. Kaiser Chiefs they've crashed out of the Nedbank Cup. That was after losing 2-1 to Richards Bay FC at the FNB Stadium last night. Siobonga Villani scoring a stoppage time winner to guide his team to the Nedbank Cup round of 16. In other results, Orlando Pirates uh, squeezed past Utongati FC 1-0. Cape Town City FC, they were imperious, recording an impressive 4-0 win over Bloom Celtic. And Swallows FC edged out Cape United 1-0. There's just one Nedbank Cup fixture to look out for today. That's Barocca FC up against Cape Town Spurs, kicking off at 5 p.m. Then moving to the UK log leaders, Manchester City thrashed defending champions Liverpool 4-1 in their Premier League clash at Anfield last night. Reds goalkeeper Alison Becker's stray passes leading to goals by Ilkay Gundogan and Raheem Sterling. Full Foden definitely the star on the night slotting in a fourth as Man City extended their lead at the top of the standings. Other results, Everton came from behind to draw three all in a thriller against Manchester United. Tottenham Hotspur recover after that a three-game losing streak in the league with a 2-0 win over West Bromwich. And then finally, American football dominating headlines this morning. Super Bowl 2021 saw the GOAT. Tom Brady guide the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to a comfortable 31-9 victory over the Kansas City Chiefs. The 43-year-old Brady has now extended his record to seven Super Bowl wins and 10 appearances. Brady three, three, uh, threw three touchdown passes to prevent the Chiefs from becoming the first back-to-back -back NFL champions. That's where we leave our sporting headlines for this hour. Let's get another take on the weather.
Thank you, Graham. And we also want to say a big thank you to you, our Sunrise contributors, that take the time to send us through your beautiful photos. Starting off with one that we received from Tokozo Theo Makatini, sent us this blue and grey cloudy morning from Johannesburg. Today, expect a maximum of 25 degrees and also thunder showers are in place for this morning. Then Roxy Mays from Port Elizabeth shared this lovely image of the sun peeking through the clouds in the distance. Roxy, today expect mostly sunny conditions with a maximum of 25 degrees Celsius. And while we enjoy experiencing a beautiful sunrise from your parts of South Africa, we also have some international viewers tuning in on both YouTube and the Africa channel in the US. Now this morning we report on the weather from Phoenix, Arizona. If you are in Phoenix today, you can expect some, well, we'll take a look at the temperatures, but Phoenix is the capital and most popular city in Arizona. And our viewers there today can expect partly sunny conditions that will reach a maximum of 25 degrees Celsius. Some quick weather news. International weather news is that dozens of people are missing and fear dead after a glacier crashed into the Uttarakhand Dam and triggered a huge flood in northern India. Villages have been evacuated, but officials said as many as 150 people may have been victims of the flooding. Videos shared on social media showed the flood water streaming through the area and causing widespread damage. Officials say it happened so fast there was no time to alert anyone and then in the u.s state of utah four skiers have been killed and four injured following an avalanche at mill creek canyon near salt lake city the survivors managed to dig themselves out of the snow and call emergency services skiers had earlier been warned that there were dangerous avalanche conditions in the region it is the joint deadliest avalanche in utah's history our thoughts and condolences are certainly with those who have been lost. Well, that's where we leave your weather news. Let's quickly take another look at your temperatures. If you're in Paula Kwane, a low of 17 with a high of 26 can be expected. Thunder showers in Mbombela, 20, 22 with a high of 30. Pretoria, 18, reaching a high of 27. Johannesburg, 17 with a high of 25. Mahiking, thunder showers can be expected with a high of 27. Klagstorp, 18 with a high of 31. Kimberley, 20, reaching a high of 34. Partly cloudy conditions in Bloemfontein today with a high of 30. Richards Bay 23 reaching a high of 29. Rain can be expected in Peter Maritzburg with a low of 19, a high of 24. Rainy conditions in Durban today with a high of 27. Mtata 14 reaching a high of 21. Partly cloudy in East London 17 reaching a high of 21. Partly cloudy conditions in Craddock today with a high of 32. Port Elizabeth 16 reaching a high of 25. George 14 with a high of 24. In the mother city today, sunny conditions with a high of 24. Worcester 14 reaching a high of 33. Sunny conditions in Sutherland 11 reaching a high of 30. And partly cloudy conditions in Uppington, a low of 22 with a high of 38 degrees Celsius. That's where we leave your weather for now. If you have a beautiful sunrise photo that you'd love to share with us, please do so on the Expresso Facebook page. And even mm. when you get to the Express and Morning Show, SABC, so maybe you can let us know Ooh. what you're, okay. you're missing. This wasn't meant to happen like this. This is a waste mm. of good Clover Classic. And you missed it. Doesn't it doesn't belong your here. Shirt. It belongs in my mouth. Robin is going to kill you. Goodness. Robin is going to kill you. Honestly. Me. But as I said before, I was rudely disrupted by Tabitha. Um, so on social media, we were asking you, it, of course, it is Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. What song would you love to sing to your loved one? And of course, you guys at home came with mm -hmm. all the song options, and we love your I love you. them. We love them. We've got so many, so many comments that have come through on our Facebook page. Let's take a look at them. Uh, the first one is from Zanele Sitole saying, uh, Morning Express of family, I would sing Anita Baker sweet. Ooh, with all my heart, I love you, baby. Ah. Wow. Stay with me cause I believe I'm in love. Yes, sing it, Anita. Sweet love. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The next comment that came Ooh. through is from? Daphne. Daphne. <laughs> she <laughs> says, good morning all. I would sing love letters in the sand. Oh. Do you know that Song? No, 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 not quite, you Daphne. Uh, I know if you can try send me uh, the artist. I usually connect via artist. <laughs> okay. you send me the artist, I'll connect.
perfect. Perfect. We have Beverly Plyke saying, have you ever been in love so bad from Brandy? That one have you, know. you ever loved somebody so much it makes you cry? <laughs> we have Colleen also <laughs> coming through. She says, good morning, Expresso family. I would sing Westlife Queen of My Heart. I'll always look back <laughs> as I walk away. You're the queen of my heart. I love it. <laughs> oh, love man. I love the month of love. Yes, and I we love have love. one more, Uncle Tabsy. Mm -hmm. It says, from Somalis, it says, Bob Marley, is this love? Is this love? Is this love? Is this love? Is this love that I'm feeling? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I love Definitely it. Definitely love it. Connect to that express and morning for SABC. But right now, for some real entertainment, everybody. Oh, wow. <laughs> is this love? Is this love? Is this love? <laughs> I'm absolutely loving Gospel Mondays. And I think we might even sub tubs in there because that beautiful voice is coming through, brother. Now, of course, with our poll winning song this morning, it's called Waymaker by Nigerian singer Sinash. It has been covered by a number of Christian music artists, from the likes of Michael W. Smith to Mandisa and Bethel Music. And now the, successes, the success of the song helped Sinash become the first African artist to top the Billboard Christian Songwriters chart last year. Now, the song also just recently went viral on social media after people gathered in their cars around a hospital in Georgia, singing and giving praise to all of the frontline workers. Now, this morning, we're dedicating the song to all our frontline workers and those helping to fight the coronavirus in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, Waymaker by Jared Ricketts.
that is who you are Even can when I can't see it You're working Even when I can't feel it You're working You never stop working You never stop You never stop working You never stop Even when I can't feel it You're working Even when I can't see it You're working You never stop working Stop, you never stop working Oh, you are here Mending every heart Oh, I worship you Oh, I worship you Welcome back, everybody. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show right here on SABC3. It is Monday, of course, and we are just into the topic of relationships. And if you didn't know, we are 318 days into South Africa's COVID-19 lockdown. And for some of us, that is precisely the last time we conducted our working life away from home and were able to interact with our teams and also our colleagues in the same workspace online. And as I mentioned, it is Monday, and that means we're talking all things relationships. And today we're asking you, how do you connect with your colleagues while working remotely. That's right. So we are joined by clinical psychologist Asha Dulab. She's with us alongside friend of Expresso and industrial psychologist Kim Lee Ricketts and they are here to help us this morning as we unpack this topic and also talking. We are taking your questions and comments via our Facebook page. So head on over online, ask those comments or also you can call us. Our studio line is open. That number is 021 110 Please connect with us. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good a very important topic today. Absolutely. So great to have Kim join me. <laughs> Thank you for having me and I'm really excited to be here. So and to chat to all of you. It, yes. it, it's so interesting because I can't believe that 318 days mm. ago we were all normal life going into work but now a lot of people are finding themselves working <coughs> remotely from home. I'll start with you Asha. Why is it so important for us to connect and also just be around people uh, and in a space, in a working space? Well, we all are wired to connect and we are in, in the digital age, so we are um, needing to connect to maintain good, healthy relationships for giving us a sense of belonging, um, to redefine our purpose. Um, you know, we feel safe. We feel um, uh, we, we build our teams in that way. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's vital that we connect because it, it also creates capacity for our energy, for our fulfillment and for our passion which we need in our workspace, creativity and insight and inspiration. And you need those connections. I mean, you <laughs> share so much of your, not only your personal life, but your day-to-day decision-making with your colleagues. And Kim, I'm gonna ask you this question. Being isolated from your colleagues and you know not being able to share with them, it can also have a negative impact on your mm -hmm. mental health. So for people working from home, how can they maintain that connection, but at the end of the day, also improve their mental health status? Mm -hmm. So exactly to what Asha said, connecting with people is obviously part of what we do. We're human beings, we're wired to connect. And in this digital age, what's prevalent or what's become more prevalent in companies is that people are feeling isolated. People are, fe are also feeling burnt out 
because they're working longer hours and they're not finding time to just actually switch off. What is important in terms of mental health is to, to take a step back and to, to take back the control. The space that you're finding yourself in is uncertain and now it's about how do I find myself in this new space and define the new space for me. So it's about taking back the control. What I find works is a check-in at the beginning of every week with my manager remotely. So whether in the morning I would grab a cup of coffee with my manager, it's now in, like instituting that and actually just starting up doing that again. At the end of the week, checking out to be able to set the goals for the week with the check-in and the check-out to reflect so that you maintain that connection to, to how you would predominantly show up at, in the workplace. From a mental health perspective, what it does is just also create that space for formal connection in terms of this is the work, this is what we need to do, but also the informal connection in terms of how are you. So taking a step back and just reflecting on where am I at for that week. Something else we've also done in terms of mental health is looking at co-creating um, virtual working spaces. So when you go into the office, you'd be in a room together. You'd sit you'd, much like this and you'd brainstorm. Yeah. What I've started doing is actually setting up time with my colleagues to say, let's work together. Let's create that virtual working space where we can all bring together something we're struggling with to connect on that level. So from a, from a mind perspective, it's tapping into those, not just being the mom at home, but now also being the worker to separate that a bit for, for each other and for ourselves. Yeah. I absolutely love that, creating mm -hmm. that space for that. But how often should we be doing that? How often should we be checking in, uh, checking in and checking up on our colleagues um, and, our, and, our, and our work people? I think as regular as possible. Um, generally, um, companies are doing once a week, like Kima says, check-ins, but really, um, uh, you know, having that emotional resonance with your with your team players and, and checking in on a one-on-one -on -one level is important, but as well as within small groups. I think where, where teams are quite big, we can maybe uh, look at having smaller group meetings where people then feel more safer to share. And, and like him saying, you know, asking the questions, how are you? And really getting into um, the depth of authentic conversation. And also a very important question is, how can I help? Um, because people are struggling at the moment and that isolation not only physically but isolated in their minds and their hearts. So yeah. There is that isolation and there's also something about getting to the office where you're just like, okay, this is now my space and a lot of people are deprived of that. Well, Asha Dulab and Kim Lee Ricketts, they're not going anywhere. They are staying with us as we unpack your work relationships and keeping them healthy, especially while working remotely. Please connect with us. Our lines are open as well as you can direct your questions onto our Expresso Facebook page. Well, a working day requires one thing in my mind. Mm. Yes, okay, two things. A good video connection and a good <laughs> cup of coffee. And you can still, even if you're operating remotely, you can still check we, we're yeah. sharing a coffee Shows experience. Well, that. That. <laughs> uh, good to see you, but we do need our coffee. And they say that if you want to expand your culture, you have to lean over the borders of your own country. I love that. And Espresso is making it possible to do exactly that, to expand our coffee culture by bringing the diverse taste of cities from all around the world into our homes, including Cape Town, Tokyo, Tokyo, Stockholm, Vienna, Buenos Aires, uh, which is one of my favorites. And of course, today in my cup, the vibrant city of Shanghai, right in your own home and our studio with the World Explorations Range. Oh, so true, G. Amazing. And these are an absolute hit. I've got to be honest, man, especially in the studio. So last week, we tasted the coffee culture of the mother city, which I know mm, you cool. absolutely yeah, love. Nice and intense. Yeah. Now this nice week, intense. we're leaving the home behind and we're setting <laughs> off to Shanghai, China to experience the vibrant coffee culture of this exciting Exciting, exciting city, of course. Mm. Uh, so, obviously, these are all in the Lunga range, which is a tall cup of coffee um, by the Nespresso standard. That's 110 mils as opposed to the 40 mil espresso. Um, and the range includes two intense, two balanced, two new kind of mild Lunga coffees being the Buenos Aires and the Shanghai. And when I say yeah. mild, it doesn't lack the flavor. Mm. Um, it's quite acidic, but it's, but it's got a little bit of a fruitiness to it, yeah. I've got to say, which is synonymous of, you know, the Chinese uh, fruit sweets that they always love and I think that's where those notes are coming from. I don't from. know why I have to taste with my eyes closed. I'm like, <laughs> you've uh, got to go kind of like really all go the way to place. Shanghai, man. <laughs> um, but it's nice. If you, if you like a lighter coffee in terms of its intensity, remember the intensity level doesn't pertain to the amount of caffeine or something yes, like that. Yes. Uh, it's purely that flavor intensity but an intense flavor takes nothing away from the complexity and for a lighter flavor profile, this is very complex. Um, just like a relationship. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> Valentine's Day is just around the 
corner and we've got something special for you to celebrate we've got a red hot prize up for grabs yeah it's an espresso bundle perfect for sharing that includes a red cities and milk machine world Expira explorations 10 sleeve coffee bundle nice. a barista apron biscuit bundle mm. and a limited edition travel mug and it's all worth 6,399 rand and here's what you've got to do it's so and, simple and the travel mug lasts the entire day uh, and you used to I've got one it was the best thing that they've Wait, given me it was amazing oh. really, you've got to drink a lot more coffee bro Valentine's um, Day gifts <laughs> <laughs> um, but what we want you to do is reply to the competition post on Expresso's Facebook or our Twitter page you'll find it linked there you can tell us which loved one you would like to spoil this Valentine's Day and most importantly why remember to include the hashtag Nespresso Expresso and that competition closes on Thursday the 25th of February at 12 o'clock so you've got plenty of time but get on it enter now and find the terms and conditions on expressoshow.com Cheers, Cheers. Braga. <laughs> So, we've had classic fashion from Timby, classic cars, thanks Chad, and we've seen classic hairstyles. And you, Michael? Classic! A classic range from Clover. Timeless taste. Made with love by Clover. Welcome back. Of course, you're still locked in. It's your feel-good breakfast show. And of course, today we are getting creative in the kitchen and doing something special. And we know we're all about a picnic, of course, when it comes to V-Day as well. And if you're looking for a delightful and delicious idea, then of course, try our incredibly Moorish five ingredient clover classic phyllo cups. Yes, it sounds so delicious. It's a mouthful. And when you make it, it's going to be exactly that too. So they are easy to make and they are the perfect picnic snacking item. And here to show us how it's done. So we brown in the building. You know what? I love snacking. That's like my favorite type of food. And if you want to take it on a picnic, even better. So I'm going to show you. So we've got our phyllo sleeves right All here. Right. And we're going to use our Clover Classic 40% fat spread with cream. Okay. And we simply just want to create that fatty layer that will give our, our pastry that, the, the, that fluffiness that yes, you want. Yes, yes, yes. So you simply just give it a little bit of a brush. So there is an art and there's a there's a desired phyllo texture, right? You want the crispiness but the fluffiness too. Yes. Okay, I got there you, I got go. you. Oopsie. So we'll put it in there. We want to create the little cups and we'll do about three layers of them. And right. that's how we're going to end up with that amazing different layers. And I just want to make sure, Zoe, I can eat this, right? It's not paper. No, no, no. It looks this is, very this much is like, like it. This is going to change your life. I'm going to show you now. Okay. So there we go. Raul, I might actually put you to work yeah, to let, just let me help you out really there. dust it with a little bit more of our Clover Classic Fat Spread. Yeah. So there we go. So I'll prepare some of those for you. What are you going to get up to in the to meantime? I'm going to you and I'm going to actually show you how to make our little cups together. So okay. I've got about three sheets here. We're going to put it together and I just want to obviously sink it into our cup that um, our muffin tin that has been greased and now you can really play around with what you want to fill your phyllo cups with so we've got some onion marmalade which is always Ooh, a winner okay. you can add a little bit of that in here 
So I guess you could technically get creative at this point if you have like your desired fillings that you might prefer. This is where you can kind of get your own little um, customization going, right? That's right. And you know what? There's something about the onion marmalade that's just going to add that like gooeyness when you Ooh. bite into it. <laughs> okay, leave Sorry. that on the floor. I'm taking off the chef Tim again. I'm all over we'll, the show. We'll leave that. That's fine. <laughs> and then, of course, brie cheese is amazing, especially if you're going to take it on a picnic. It holds its structure. It's amazing if you pop it in the oven. So we're going to just top it up with a little bit of brie. Okay. There you go. So naturally, because you drop the spatula. Yes, and I only got it, through one. But we'll, we'll simply <laughs> just fill up this up and then you pop it into the oven for 15 to 20 minutes, depending on your oven strength. Okay. Do keep an eye on it. You don't want it to burn. But because we've greased, pre-greased our pan, we are left with these cute little phyllo cups. You've done really well. Is this something you you've done before? Do you ever like, if, have you ever done like a romantic date where you surprise the guy? Okay. I haven't. I haven't. I'm not, well, we're not going to say that and if it was standard. the other way around, would it impress you enough this if someone bought some Philo Cups? Mzansi, I hope you're listening. Some Philo Cups is uh, the way to Zoe's art, of course. And it's definitely the way to mine. When it comes to food, I think the way you've packed this, the way we can pack it for a snack, for a picnic, it's absolutely perfect, of course. Now, this is the way to get <laughs> that romance on in Valentine's Day. And if you want to know how to get it on, then of course, here's a recipe recap on all the goods. <laughs> Love it. Oh, thank you so much, team. Um, uh, that's worked up an appetite. Now let's re-engage with the best of ourselves because that's what we need to do in our current situation here in South Africa. Food Relief Organization, an incredible group of people. Mm. Food Forward South Africa. Believe that together. We can create a South Africa without hunger. I get behind that. Mm. We know that food insecurity is a massive problem in our country, astounding the levels at the moment. And now more than ever during the pandemic, people are suffering and need a helping hand. Enter the Food Forward SA's Food Relief Initiative for Vulnerable Patients, a pilot project in partnership with Feed the Nation Foundation and the Western Cape Department of Health. Andy Duplessis, who is a wonderful human being and a good friend of the show, Managing Director of Food Forward SA, joins us now online to tell us a little bit more. Andy, great to see you again, my friend. How are you i'm very well graham it's good to see you again it's been a while though it, it has been a while since we connected with you but you haven't stopped doing the amazing work that you do on the ground you've been very very busy uh, but maybe let's start here paint a picture for us what's the situation like where uh, uh, when it comes to these food hampers that you've been busy with uh, wh where will they be handed out where have you been handing out food uh, hampers yeah, so as you know, under, no, under normal circumstances, our program actually reaches just over 1,000 registered nonprofit organizations, and we provide them with a basket of food. Mm -hmm. And what they do in turn is they convert those, those, that food into meals so that people are able to receive a meal every single day. But what we found was because millions of people have lost their jobs, between four, five and six million people have lost jobs in the last year, we found that more and more people were becoming food insecure. And so we wanted to focus more on healthier communities. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that the most vulnerable in our communities, which are those suffering from COVID-19 that have lost the ability to earn an income, as well as those that have chronic illnesses that just won't allow them to work, that need to rebuild their immune systems so that they have the strength to look for work. But of greater concern for us was we didn't want those food parcels just to go to anyone. We needed a verification process in place. So we approached the Department of Health. I, I I used to work in the Department of Health many years ago, and so I still know the people there, Dr. Keith Kluter, who heads up the health department and, 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 and the people that support him. And so we approached uh, Dr. Kluter and, 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 the, the, and his team, and we said that we have this initiative where we'd like to support COVID patients um, as well as people with chronic illnesses in, in poor communities so that they were able to receive a food parcel from us, a very healthy food parcel. 
But what we needed from the health department was that through the clinics, the, the nursing sisters and community dietitians should, I, when they do their screening of patients and they find that food insecurity is also a problem, that is where we want to step in. So what the health department does is all those clinics send the details through to one coordinator centrally at the health department. Once a week, we get those patients' names and addresses, and we deliver a food parcel, which consists of a range of items, fruits and vegetables as well, uh, directly to, to, the fam to the patient's home so that the family can have food at least for the next three to four weeks to help build the immune system. Andy, this, this speaks to how far you've come in as, a, as an organization, the fact that you've got the strategic network to be able to employ at the moment. Um, so kudos to you for taking it to this level now and including the nutrition um, based on the, the greatest need. But I've got to ask, because I'm working in this space, I've heard astounding numbers of the level of food insecurity and just how hard communities are being hit. How bad is the situation from your experience out on the ground? How desperate is the need at the moment? Graham, I have to say that people are desperate. I mean, just think about this. Um, I know many people where not only the, the husband or the breadwinner uh, has lost their jobs, but also the wife who may have also been a breadwinner. So overnight, both parents have lost their ability to earn an income. Mm. And, and that leaves people stressed out. People are panicking. Um, you know, they can't focus. Um, it's difficult to find jobs in this environment. So the need out there is great. You go and look at the Sasa queues um, uh, when it's paydays, and you look at uh, the amount of people willing to come early in the mornings, long queues, desperate to receive that Sasa grant. That's the situation out there all across South Africa at the moment. So our focus is not only just to feed people. We have to make sure that we find the, the individuals and those families that are vulnerable at this time so that our intervention takes place at the right time so that people get food, the food they need to survive, um, that people have the strength to be able to go and look for work, and that we transform poor communities into healthy communities, into healthy communities because we're focusing on patients with COVID-19 and we're focusing on individuals that have chronic illnesses such as tuberculosis, HIV and AIDS um, and other health illnesses so that we rebuild our, our communities to become healthier communities. So these food parcels are going to targeted individuals to make sure that the most vulnerable individuals in the family, keep in mind we are not only reaching the individual or the breadwinner, that entire family is being fed. So sure. the family where the child may only be, as you know, schools are closed right now and so children aren't getting the school meal that they need. Um, so it's crucial that we reach these homes so that school children are also able to benefit from this, so that children in early childhood development centers are also able to eat the meal because children that do not get a meal cannot learn efficiently and optimally. And this is why it's so mm. crucial mm. that we ramp up and get food to those that need it at this time. Well, it's totally heartbreaking to know that there are so many households and so many families really who are population. food insecure. <laughs> I mean, to really go without food is such a, a terrible thing. And thank you very much, Andy Duplessis, Managing Director of Food Forward uh, SA, for the wonderful work that you are doing together with uh, the Feed the Nation Foundation. And of course, the Western thank Cape. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. And the Western Cape Department of Health have also stepped in there. They really are part of this. They're helping to restore dignity to over 7,000 people. That's a lot of people, of course, who have uh, been affected by COVID-19. It's a start. It's a start. And it's also the knock-on effect that you're feeding the breadwinners, but you're also yeah. feeding their families and empowering the communities and helping to strengthen those bonds. Incredible work. Andy, we absolutely love you, my friend. Hopefully that's inspired you at home to think about where the country is right now on what you can do.
It's my feel good breakfast show. Yes, welcome back to it, your feel good breakfast show. It is Expresso. We are live on SAVC3, the month of love, the week of love. Thank you very much for choosing to start this week off with us. And we're talking relationships. Today, for our relationship advice segment, we are asking a big question How do you connect with your colleagues while working remotely? Clinical psychologist Asha Dulab, alongside friend of Expresso and industrial psychologist Kim Lee Ricketts, are here today to help us discuss and unpack this. And we want you to share your thoughts. We want to hear from you on our Facebook page, Expresso Morning Show, SABC3. Remember to use that hashtag, Expresso Show, but you can also call us 021-110-5552. Ladies, Hello. big, big question, right? Mm, absolutely. Kim, I'll start with you for this one. A lot of us are spending time, you know, on Zoom meetings, mm. and it can become quite monotonous to spend your day, the entire day, on this visual, you know, platform. Mm. How can we use tools like music and, you know, other things to break away from this monotonous, monotonous cycle? Mm. Mm. So I think the beauty of the virtual space is that there are no rules at the moment. Mm. So anything goes. It leaves the room for play. Yes. Um, and through music, as you've mentioned, some of the things I've implemented is starting a meeting with music. So having people join, but having music on, and you can immediately see the shift in terms of energy, mm. in terms of just the mood, and I like to call it mood music. So what we also do is get people to submit their songs, mm. and we create certain playlists for them. So, and, and I think the beauty of it is to just to see their faces light up when their song plays. They're like, that's my jam. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's what the, the virtual space has created. So using things like music mm. um, to, to just give that break, that break in, in terms of coming from one from one Zoom call to another. Yes. Um, we've also introduced things like quizzes, so we, we do, you know, asking some questions during a meeting session, so tools like Menti, mm. Mentimeter, which is something where you can create a question, get people to interact and engage with you in that way. Mm. And what that does is also allow people to get involved, so you're not talking at people all the time. Mm. But that break in the Zoom meeting to say, okay, cool, we're having an ad break, so fastest, we, we said it's not fastest fingers first, it's fastest network first now that happens. Love it. <laughs> in terms of people I love it. being able to connect and engage in a different way and that creates the, the, I think the balance for me, it also looks at, well, Jared is rehearsing for most part, mm. so people get free shows. I said, because we're merging the two worlds, it's them hearing him sing in the background and now going, guys, okay, quick ad break, mm. we've got a free show coming up, mm. we'll get kiddies joining and I think again, as I mentioned, there are no rules. So the play element mm -hmm. in terms of laughter also comes in because you see people authentically, you see mm -hmm. the real person with them having their kids join the call. Um, mm -hmm. It now shows that, you know, in this time, what it's really called for is a time of understanding and empathy. So there's been an increased um, empathy and understanding for having things like that happen. And I think that really does break the whole, you know, routine in terms of just being strict work focus career mm. yes. it's now how do we look at the whole, the whole person or the person as a whole and that's become Absolutely. very very important right because the virtual world and what it's done is that it's disrupted the way that we culture ourselves in human connection and which is yes. such an important thing if you are working at an office you have the opportunity to interact with people laugh at jokes that they're telling across the room or across the, stu uh, the, 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 the office uh, go out for coffee break or uh, whatever break you're taking uh, be able to you know do diff all sorts of different things the virtual world really has disrupted that, but it also means we have to find some sort of balance. Yes. Balance is important. Let's talk about balance and striking balance, Asha. So, I mean, with our, our virtual world, what, what's happening with remote working is that we have other uh, aspects of our life that's also come into that space. Mm. You know, we have children at home. We, this is our home was meant to be our nurturing space. So now we have quite a lot happening at the same time. Mm. So balance actually ties in with time management, mm. having a routine, because that will give us a sense that we have some sense of control in our day. And I love what Kim says uh, of keeping it light and and also tapping into music, because music actually taps into our vagus nerve, mm. which is our our parasympathetic nervous system. You say vagus. The vagus nerve. Well, that got me really excited. <laughs> and that's vagus. Our <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. That's our relaxation response, yeah. which is wonderful. We need to feel relaxed in that space. Mm. And also what I love about what Kim's saying is all these ways of connecting me to create that sense of balance. It's about that lightness. And also we have pets around us. Yes. So let's have, uh, you know, invite your pet to, to the session. I love um, that. Let's have sessions where we can... Um, Look at what we can con congratulate people on. Mm. Um, mm. You know, have mm. a congrats day. Mm. Um, because everyone is achieving on many aspects of their lives. 
So yeah, balance is important and it means just finding balance in all aspects and allowing time and giving ourselves permission for self-care in this time. Uh, time for relaxation and rest mm. because people are feeling quite zoomed out on the virtual. Yeah, people are zoomed, zoomed out. out. Yes, people yes. really are zoomed out. I think, I'm sorry, Asha mentioned self-care but also yes. self-love with it being the month of love. It's mm -hmm. really reflecting and going, what does this mean for me? Where, where do I find myself and how do I pay more attention to where mm -hmm. I'm at? by loving myself a little bit more. You can only do that by listening to yourself, yes. listening to yourself, being connected with yourself. Yes. And when you are connected with yourself, you're able to better connect with others and share that experience with them. I love it. Yes. Well, we would like you to continue to engage with us on our social media, Expresso Morning Show, SABC3. Let's hear from you, or you can give us a call, right? Absolutely. And the girls will still be joining us for how to connect with your special uh, loved one for Valentine's Day. Love that. <laughs> Well, from talking about work relationships to relationships <laughs> to smelling extra fresh for your love relationship. Love is literally in the air, literally and figuratively. And one thing I really love is the confidence that a good and the right fragrance can give you. So whether you want to be sexy, flirty or sporty, there really is a perfect scent for everyone. And that's why we have our fashion and beauty editor Nox Mafu here to tell us all about why fragrances could be the perfect value. Valentine's Day gift. Not yes. when it comes to a Valentine's Day gift and especially a fragrance, it is such a personal Ooh. gift to give someone. Yes. yes. Why why should this be on someone's list? Yeah, it's an intimate thing. I think you said like it's very personal and I think the intimacy of it really makes it such a special gift. You want to find something that will remind you of the person. There's so much a variety that's available. So when you choose that lovely fragrance, what you're saying to someone is that I feel you. I really, it's like quite an intimate way of saying, you know, I care about you and I enjoy this about you or, you know, that they remind you of those notes. So there are different fragrances. For instance, if you like more floral things, you know, that could be maybe for the woman in your life who likes more flirty things or a more musky kind of tone if you're going for the gents. So they're really lovely top notes and even heart notes to look out for that are really great for a fragrance. And there's a 20% oh. literally discount at the moment on at Woolworths on those fragrances. So in store online, it's a good time to get a fragrance right Amazing. Now. Well, <laughs> I've always wanted to ask this. So if you're about to buy a fragrance for someone, do you need to buy what you like to Ooh. smell on them or do you need to buy what they like to smell like because there's a fine balance there's a fine balance and i mean you can't impose your things on someone no. for me it's about what the person generally tends to like right so for instance if you've got someone who's a bit more let's say i hate the word manly man but kind of masculine more masculine a, yeah. a more masculine person you're probably going to go for your earth tones so you're looking for your musk your oak moss and um, those are kind of the notes that you'll go for if you're someone who's a little bit more metrosexual and they you know so maybe lighter notes like your lemon and your nutmeg but all of these working together is great so for instance i love this extraordinaire um, fragrance which can come as a gift set between the two great notes like that it's a very good combination for kind of the man on the move so it's got those musky tones but really light fit so your lemons your nutmegs are available in here because I'm looking at the packaging I have a weakness for <laughs> looking at a beautiful perfume yes. bottle and be like oh let's try this yes. now let's take a look at the ones you've got there and these yes. are all from Woolworths these are all from Woolworths and what I love about any product from Woolworths especially in the W Beauty range it is always 100% vegan and no um, cruelty to animals which is important if we go to the um, ladies section here there's this amazing fragrance called Bliss yes. and what I love about this is that it's got very fruity notes but also it has a musky tone so if you're someone who kind of loves something that's got a more floral, hearty note there, this is a really good one to go. The packaging is just delicious. I really like that. I know, right? It's so beautiful. So your essential woods are definitely available in this. So I would definitely um, take this because it comes together. It's a really nice gift. But of course, extraordinaire for the gents is really, really good. The deodorant set also such a lovely Give it a spray. I know you at home yes. can't smell it right <laughs> but now, but we can. I can pick up some of the notes. <laughs> but definitely, you Sorry. see, here you're seeing a little bit, you see the hot soul notes here are your oak moss and your dry woods here, you know. So I really, really enjoy that. Definitely for the man on the move, um, but a 
firm favorite and of course Heartlight we always go on about her she's a great one <laughs> but bliss for the women I definitely say too. I like that are you a one fragrance type of person or do you have a fragrance for an occasion maybe an everyday fragrance I love to mix it up I think you can never have too much fragrance so <laughs> I get a lot and actually we like if someone says that they like it I don't put that on the side and be like that's my special one and then there's kind of an everyday smell so I like to mix it up and then of course when the lighter ones you know that aren't too heavy on the mask I even mix the two so even just after a shower with a little bit of oil base I'll just add my fragrance there which makes it stay for longer so that's a nice trick I heard the trick is also you shouldn't rub when you no. put your perfume on you shouldn't rub the wrist yeah so you shouldn't rub just after a shower is great apparently your pores are the most open so they're more receptive to the smells and the moisture can get locked in also so definitely make it worth your while oh amazing <laughs> well Knox it's always so great to hear all of the amazing things that Woolworths have to offer and of course for this Valentine's Day spoil the special someone that you love with a scent that they can't resist you can shop all of your fragrances at Woolworths and get 20% off when you're buying in store online and on the app this offer is available until the 14th of January which I mean February which is Valentine's <laughs> yes. Day so make sure you head on over to Woolies in store online or through the app oh, you can make my day. Oh, welcome back. You're still locked in, of course, at your feel, feel Good Breakfast Show. And our singer, TV presenter and writer, Rochelle Liederman, joins us for our Gospel Monday performance this morning and a 2019 album, Noch a Kanz, with a gospel hit, Overflow. Now, it's topped the SA charts, of course. And I've got to ask you, Rochelle, why on earth are we choosing this song this morning? I know it's a powerful one and a beautiful one, yes. but I believe it's also yours, yes? That's right. You know, I wrote this song in a place, and especially where we are as South Africans and the global world at the moment, we find ourselves being at a very empty space in our life. And many times we want to give out of our cup, but we need to give out of our overflow. My grandmother always used, used to give me tea out of her pirang. Yes, As yes, say, yes, yes, Michelle, yes. you should drink, yeah. And I think many times we want to give out of our cup and then there's nothing left for yes. us. So it's so important to fill our own cups and then out of the overflow we give to others. I absolutely love it. What a beautiful analogy. Well, here we are with this beautiful performance, Overflow. Take it away, Michelle. Thank you so much. I am lost 
Goosebumps, ladies and gentlemen, Rochelle Liederman with Overflow. And later on, of course, she will be singing with Jared Records for another one of our Gospel Monday performances. But before we get to it, let's find out what's happening in the latest with our news. Wow! <laughs> Well, yes, we are finding out what's happening in the world with the news just after 8 o'clock here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Starting off here in Mzansi, all medical aid schemes in South Africa will be covering the cost of the COVID-19 vaccine for its members. This comes after the SA's Council for Medical Schemes added the COVID-19 vaccine to its list of prescribed minimum benefits. And the new list of prescribed minimum benefits now includes screening, testing and medical management for COVID-19, including ventilation and rehabilitation. Now, this means that coverage for the COVID-19 vaccine will be a separate benefit and will not affect a member's savings. Search and rescue operations are underway in Bumalanga after severe flooding claimed the lives of at least eight people. Five others are missing. A 13-year-old boy is believed to have been swept away by flood water. Families are helping disaster management teams in searching for their loved ones despite heavy rains hampering the rescue efforts. The per uh, persistent rainfall has caused extensive damage in Bumalanga since tropical storm Eloise spilt over to South Africa from Mozambique last month. And communities are, of course, uh, in, uh, based in floodline areas have been most vulnerable and they have been cautioned to move to safer areas. In international news, scientists believe that they may have discovered the smallest reptile on Earth, a chameleon subspecies the size of a seed. Two of the tiny chameleons were discovered by a German Madagascan expedition team in Madagascar. Now, the male nano chameleon has a body of just 13.5 millimeters, and uh, the Bavarian State Collection of Zoology in Munich says that this makes it the smallest of some 11,500 known species of reptiles. Scientists recommended that the chameleon be listed as critically endangered to protect it and its habitat. 
Meanwhile, in Cuba, Cuba has announced it will allow private businesses to operate in most industries in what is a major reform of its state-controlled economy. Labor Minister Marta Elena Feito says that the list of authorized industries had increased from 200 or rather 127 from 127 to more than 2,000. Only a minority of industries uh, would be reserved for the state. Cuba's economy has been hit hard by the pandemic and U.S. sanctions introduced by Donald Trump's administration as well. And now news of what a four-year-old brought back from the woods. Uh, Stephanie Brown from Ragged Beach in the U.S. state of Virginia had the surprise of her life when her four-year-old son Dominic headed out to the woods at a resort during a family holiday and brought back a baby deer which he had befriended. Shocked mom Stephanie managed to uh, take a picture of the unique moment and shared it on Facebook where it went viral very quickly and people were impressed by how at ease the fawn looked in the presence of the four-year-old and Stephanie explained that the family had been packing to leave and head back home when Dominic showed up with uh, his new friend and the picture on Facebook shows Dominic uh, and his friend Rudolf the red-nosed reindeer in pajamas uh, next to uh, the baby deer on the porch of the holiday apartment how cute and the pair uh, look perfectly at ease with each other and of course they uh, or the fawn they seemed in no hurry to head back to the woods Stephanie says that she asked Dominic to walk his friend back to the woods so that it could reunite with its own mother sweet news sweet story right there as we leave it for the morning here is Graham at the final look at what's happening in sports Thanks so much to be so let's kick it off with cricket this morning here in South Africa. The Dolphins and the Lions were both crowned Momentum One Day Cup champions. That was after the competition final was rained out after 55.2 overs in the Biodome in Senves Park in Potterstrom on Friday. The final was initially scheduled to take place on Thursday, but the match was abandoned without a ball being bowled due to heavy rain. So that result means that the Dolphins do in fact retain the One Day Cup trophy that they won last season. Momentous weekend in international rugby. Scotland claimed a first win at Twickenham since 1983 after overcoming reigning Six Nations champions England 11-6 on Saturday. Wing Duan van Merwe, he scored the only try of the match with returning fly half Finn Russell in uh, unbelievable form, starring on the day to guide Scotland to the victory and the Calcutta Cup. Other Six Nations results from the day saw France score seven tries to thrash Italy 50-10 and Wales defeating Ireland in a hard-fought encounter 21-16. And bringing it back home for football news, Kaiser Chiefs have crashed out of the Nedbank Cup that was after losing 2-1 to Richards Bay FC at the FNB Stadium last night. Siabonga Velane scoring a stoppage time winner to guide his team to the Nedbank Cup round of 16. In other results, Orlando Pirates beat Untongati FC 1-0. Cape Town City FC recorded an impressive 4-0 win of a fellow Premiership outfit Bloom Celtic. And then Swallows FC, they just edged out Cape United 1-0. There'll be one Nedbank Cup fixture today. That's Baraka FC taking on Cape Town Spurs at 5pm. Moving to the UK, log leaders, Manchester City. They thrashed defending champions Liverpool 4-1 in their Premier League clash at Anfield last night. Reds goalkeeper Alison Becker's stray passes led to goals by Ilkay Gundogan and Raheem Sterling. Phil Foden was a star on the night as well, slotting in a fourth as Man City extended their lead at the top of the standings. In other results, Everton came from behind in a thriller to draw three all against Manchester United and Tottenham Hotspur. They ended their three-game losing streak in the league with a 2-0 win over West Bromwich Albion. And then finally on to American football and more history-making moments. Super Bowl 2021 saw the GOAT Tom Brady guide the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to a comfortable 31-9 victory over the Kansas City Chiefs. The 43-year-old Brady has now extended his record to seven Super Bowl wins and 10 appearances. Brady Brady threw three touchdown passes to prevent the Chiefs from becoming the first back-to-back -back NFL champions. That's where we leave our sport for this Monday morning. Let's get one last look at the weather.
Thank you, Graham. And we are wrapping up your weather forecast for the day by recapping some of the sunrise contributions we've been receiving. Thank you to KVD Morisane, Louise G. Cherry from Durban, Ntokozo Theo Makatini from Joburg, and Roxy Mays from Port Elizabeth. Thank you for your beautiful sunrise photos. And if you would love to share your beautiful sunrise photo with us, please continue to do so. We love hearing from you and also seeing where you start your day in South Africa. Africa. And while we've been enjoying experiencing a sunrise from your part of the world, we do have some international viewers tuning in on both YouTube and the Africa Channel in the US. This morning we reported on the weather from Atlanta, Georgia, the capital city of Georgia, as well as the most populous city of the state. And we also shared an update for Phoenix, Arizona. It is the largest state capital by population and the only state capital that has more than one million residents. Some quick weather news with incessant rainfall expected to continue for the next few days. Residents of four provinces have been warned to be on alert for localized flooding. The South African Weather Service has issued a yellow moderate level 2 warning for disruptive rains over Gauteng, Limpopo, the Northwest and KwaZulu-Natal. The Joburg Emergency Service has urged residents and motorists to be cautious as flooding was expected in some areas. And in Pumalanga, where heavy rains continue to wreak havoc in different parts of the province, the local government's Mandla Msibi said with most rivers in flood and dams above 90% capacity, communities in these areas remain at high risk. He warned people not to cross rivers and dams, saying doing so was a tragedy waiting to happen. Kanya Manzane in Mbumbela was the worst affected by flooding, the roads and bridges collapsing and homes being washed away. We'll certainly keep you updated and that's where we leave your weather news for this morning. Let's take a quick and final look at your temperatures. If you're in Polokwane, expect a low of 17, a high of 26. Mbumbela, 22 with a high of 30. Pretoria, partly cloudy with a high of 27. Johannesburg, 17, 25. Thunder showers in place for Mahiking, 18 with a high of 27. Klagsdorp, 18 with a high of 31. Partly cloudy conditions in Kimberley today, 20 with a high of 34. Bloemfontein, partly cloudy, 17 reaching a high of 30. Richards Bay, your low is 23 your high 29. Rain can be expected in Peter Maritzburg today with a high of 24. Wet conditions in Durban 23 with a high of 27. Mtata 14 with a high of 21. Partly cloudy in East London 17 with a high of 21. Craddock 13 reaching a high of 32. Port Elizabeth 16 25. George 14 with a high of 24. Cape Town sunny conditions reaching a high of 24. Worcester 4 14, 33. Sunny conditions in Sutherland, 11 with a high of 30. And Uppington, partly cloudy conditions with a low of 22 and a high of 38 degrees Celsius. Well, that's where we leave your weather on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Thank you so much for that uh, update, Zoe Brown. But also, we've been connecting with you on our social media platforms, asking you, Valentine's Day is around the corner. What one song you'd love to sing to your loved one? And of course, you guys came through with all the lovely selections. What have people been saying? People have been saying so many things, Jamie. <laughs> we've got a whole karaoke box over here. But the first one is uh, Josephine Pickstone, Pickstone saying, Good morning, family. It's the hashtag Expresso Show, SNBC3. Of course, guys, don't forget to use the hashtag so we can find you. And she says, I will always Always Love You by Whitney Houston. That is a difficult song to sing. Point. I know you can hit that key. No Come on, Jamie. Ways For the I people. Will, not on a Monday. <gasps> Maybe on a Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> we'll always love you. I love it. I love it. I can see someone singing that down. And <laughs> then who's been, next up? Yes, we have another one of our favorites, Louise G. Sherry. She says, Good morning, Expresso family. My life partner of 20 years, if he was still alive, I would sing him Barry White's song, You're My First, My Last, My, my first, You have a voice. My us. last, my everything. Okay, Mr. Barry, why can't you do with our boys? Yes, everybody. And then we have a last one from Mpumi Geza saying, Marry You by Bruno mm, Mars. I know you want to throw that hey, out Hey, baby, I think I want to marry you. you. That's such a cute song. <laughs> Beautiful. Remember to keep connecting with us. Express a morning show, SABC3. We love connecting with you and also love hearing Raul sing his favorite oh, songs of that. Yes. <laughs> so stick with us. We'll see you in just a moment. <laughs>
Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso on SABC3. And you are just in time as we unpack our relationship topic. Now, we've been spending more and more time at home with our partners, really getting to know each other over the past 11 months during lockdown, which means Valentine's Day this year, apart from feeling a little bit different, calls for more practical experiences and gifts as we know what our relationships really need. We are joined by clinical psychologist Asha Dulab and industrial psychologist Kim Lee Ricketts they are back with us on the couch to really unpack some ideas on how we can reconnect and have a magical experience with our beloved ones this coming Sunday ladies I'm so excited I feel like I'm in such capable hands like I can ask you anything relationship wise and I'm gonna be sorted so I gotta first find out like in the last 11 months I mean it's been crazy we've been struggling but have couples been able to find like that meaningful connection and that that spark we talk about is, is it still there is it still possible? I think not only meaningful, but definitely deep, authentic, and honest. I think people have really connected um, on a different level. It's a whole new normal of connection mm. with not only our partners, but with our children, with our workers, our colleagues, with our pets. So there's a whole new great energy of love. And I suppose it's also forced less distraction as well because we're forced to engage with our partner yes. Yes. and we can't use the excuse of let's go do that or watch a movie or something. Okay. It's me and you. There's, there's no hiding here. There's a greater appreciation for connection. Yeah, I it love it. It definitely is. And you can't run away from your problems because you're on lockdown. You're, <laughs> yes. I don't want to say stuck together, but you are. You are forced to be with each other. Now, Kim, I know you had a lockdown wedding. You are still in your honeymoon phase. What are the plans for your and Jared's first Valentine's Day as a married couple? So I think what many people don't know is that Jared is quite the romantic. Ah. Oh, um, really? He really is. Okay. I was sharing with Ash a little bit earlier, our first Valentine's Day, and I remember it quite like, it's clear, in my, clear as day. Jared showed up with a big bunch of roses, a gift, and I was the one going, I have something planned for the weekend. <laughs> I didn't even know it was something we celebrated. Um, and as you mentioned, we've taken the time, I think, over the years to just connect and decide what does Valentine's Day mean to the both of us. Mm -hmm. And I think it's about sharing our love every day. So not making it just on one particular day, but spending time together. So what we found is that our love language, our way of connecting is through spending time and quality time. Um, so I think this year would be no different than spending time together because of our busy schedules. We would spend lots of time. I know he has something up his sleeve. He told me he's got something in mind. So I'm ready to be surprised. <laughs> I do like surprises, um, but I think it's going to to be the two of us just to connect sit down take a walk um, which we've been doing quite often do much more of that and I may cook a dinner you may <laughs> but I am waiting on Jared to say what that surprise is so I may not have to cook for dinner hopefully so. you don't have to <laughs> so Kim, I, I love what you're mentioning and, and the, the conversation of love languages and I, I must say I share that and I think it's quite common in the entertainment industry to, mm -hmm. to appreciate quality time mm -hmm. and uh, to appreciate that physical connection because you are often on with each other mm -hmm. um, so my question is then when it comes to that gift and showing your love on Valentine's Day what do you then suggest especially right now when it comes to expressing that Obviously, we have our love languages, but mm -hmm. do we need to focus on the gift so much, the experience, or, or just the time? I mean, what would you suggest coming up this Valentine's Day? And I'm definitely taking notes because I need another <laughs> answer here. <laughs> I think anything goes with the gift, but the greatest gift is also the gift of self-care and self-love. Um, I think that we need to give a gift of anything with a grateful open heart and receive openly with a grateful open heart. So anything can really go, but gifts um, that, that really tie in with our love language. You know, sometimes it's quality time or whether it's uh, words of affirmation. There's so many different ways of expressing love. Um, nowadays with virtual, we can do a voice note, we can do a little voice uh, video recording. Um, Valentine's Day is on a Sunday this year. It's, it's lovely to get out to connect with nature. Yes. Your nature boys yes. are doing that. Yes. Our picnics, uh, having a lovely beach day. Um, I think that our environments have been quite, um, like we said early on, it's been quite mixed up with work and um, our family life all combined. So let's recreate our home, maybe, you know, sort of redesign our home, change the light bulb, 
use candles. Yes. Mm, Such a beautiful way. There we use go. Candles, yes. yes. <laughs> and that's that's also easy on the budget. That's not anything yes. drastic. And I feel like when it comes to Valentine's Day, there are people that celebrate it and people mm -hmm. that don't celebrate it. There are people that feel like love needs to be celebrated every single day. But at the end of the day, celebrating Valentine's Day can also add a lot of anxiety mm -hmm. and pressure. How can we put our viewers at ease by removing that anxiety? Like, what, what are some of the practical things they can do to make it special without having to break the bank or really just to connect with their partner? I think, if anything, what what COVID and the pandemic has taught us is that the greatest present is our presence. We've lost so many people. Well, I speak for myself. I've lost so many friends, so many family during this time. And I think the, the fact that we get to just be together, as Asha mentioned, connecting via video call, um, sending that voice note, just letting someone know that you love them on that day, be it your pet, be it your family member, be it your brother, be it your sister, be it your loved one, um, as in your partner, Share that message and share, share it in with by having that presence and spending that time together. So I think from a practical perspective, it's just making the time to send that voice note, mm. to cook that dinner, which like I said, I may or may not have to do, <laughs> but to cook that dinner, to, to not put pressure on ourselves, but actually just to use mm. what we have with where we are and where we find ourselves. So Ral, to your nature, to Ash, Ash's nature comment, yeah. he's sitting up that picnic and having a picnic at home, using the space hang on, we hang have on, at home. Was that a picnic at home? <laughs> uh, and what was all? <laughs> I, I think just thinking differently about where we find ourselves. So if it is that you have your home space, you have your lounge, turn your lounge into that picnic space if that's yeah. all that you can do to make with what, like I said, use the resources that you have. Oh. Don't, don't put so much pressure on yourself, Ralph. I, I, love, I love what you're saying. It, it's, it's encouraging me. It's taking the pressure off me and the, and the chaos. And I think I'm almost hearing it as a form of advice in terms of what to do. So maybe just to ask you, Asha, on top of that, what other advice would you maybe have when it comes to this weekend and spending a quarantine Valentine's Day? Just to Mzanzi, I mean, what, what should we just really, really take care of and, and place importance on? Appreciate the connection that you have with your partner, with loving, kind words. That is so powerful. Just offer a smile, offer gentleness, and just a lovely compliment, a words of affirmation, but general loving kindness. And the greatest thing is, to, is, is for people to receive that love openly and acknowledge it. Oh, I, I like it. that. And you know what? If you can't get a babysitter this year, do Valentine's Day with the kids. Make it a family yes. event. Well, Asha, Kim, thank you so much for thank joining so us this morning. Us. And really, I hope you got some great tips on how to reconnect this Valentine's Day with your loved ones. We love that. We oh, love that, we connecting do. with our people that we love the most, connecting with the month of love, but also connecting you to the hottest competitions in the land. It's competition time uh, during the month of love, and we would love to congratulate someone who's won something fantastic. You want to yes. take over and I do the honors? I do, honest? I do. We are congratulating to uh, Donna Little, who has won a 500 Rand Woolies mm. gift card. Come, Come, on, Come on, everybody. Donna yes. Little. She uh, has posted her heartfelt story on our social media pages, and this is what it reads. Eugene Little, you are my lifeline, my shoulder to cry on, and my mentor. I could never even hope to express just how much appreciation I hold in my heart for you. You have helped me in the toughest of times, and you have celebrated by my side in the best of times. Hashtag, guess who? I love that. How beautiful I is that? I absolutely love that. Uh, because you need that. You need people like that in your life who are able to be by your side in different circumstances, different situations. And to have someone who is a constant when times are good and when times are bad, who's still able to rise you up back into a good space, that's the type of person that you celebrate. That's the type of person you show that you absolutely love them. So thank you so much, Eugene Little, for doing that for Donna Little. That is beautiful. We're inspired by that love. Now, of course, you can get involved in this as well. And you actually stand the chance to win a 500 Rand Woolworths gift card too. Mm. Just in time for Valentine's Day. I love All it. you have to do is reply to the competition post on our Facebook, Twitter or Instagram page. And this is what you have to tell us. Who would you like to surprise with a Valentine's Day picnic and why? Don't forget to include that hashtag, guess who? And the competition closes at 9 a.m. today. So hurry, hurry, hurry. And those T's and C's can be found on our website, which is expressoshow.com. It's exciting. And if it isn't enough, well, listen to this. Jeff Clem uh, joins us in a moment just to show us how we can impress our loved ones with a picnic platter for two.
It's my feel good breakfast show. If food is your love language, mm -hmm. say it with a scrumptious Valentine's Day picnic. Chef Clem is taking some Italian cold meats, some trout, some cream cheese rolls and pairing this with his favorite cheeses, biscuits and chili poppers. That's got my excitement. Doesn't that sound lovely, delicious mm -hmm. and fill you with love? Can food joy. be your love language? You, I think so. It's the only love language. I mean, it's the first love language. It should be. We're going to rewrite that book completely. I, I love you, man. I love you, man. I love you. Oh, man. Thank you, man. All right. This is exciting because from a personal perspective, this is some of my favorite flavors. Mm -hmm. Like I love charcuterie, I love cheeses, I love being able to mix this all. And a picnic is quite a fun thing to do because it you is. can express yourself. It is. It's not just about the food, it's about the experience of the day. And it's not a picnic like your granny used to do. I mean, I don't know what kind of picnic it's your granny had, but, <laughs> but it's completely changed. On Saturday night, a little packed little picnic, we went to the top of a beautiful mountain, watched the stars, had it like out of the boot. It was amazing. And it wasn't even Valentine's Day. And it wasn't even Valentine's Day. Wow. I what told are you, you going to do? You might, have, you might have shot yourself. No, 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 no. What are you going to do on Valentine's I've Day? I've planned now? it all. It's the build up to Valentine's <laughs> wow. Day. Wow. Yes, absolutely. Wow. So it's like breaking that idea of what a traditional picnic is. And you know what? You can absolutely go glam with a picnic, mm. which you're going to see in a little bit. But it's about making it your own and just like getting out, staying safe, and just having, like, enjoying because those you special can get moments. Safe. You, you can actually enjoy the great outdoors now. Yeah. And I think it's probably a good way to get out there and actually feel like you are doing something and do it in a safe yes. way. So I'm saying we're, we're leaving the boiled eggs and the chicken drumsticks at home wow. and we, we're ramping it up. Eh? We are, absolutely. So I'm going to ask you to grab these. These are the sorted savory crackers. Nice. These are absolutely delicious because there's so many different types. Mm. You can play around in different textures, different flavors. Like a little water biscuit. It is. That, yeah. So these have become iconic. Like people are obsessed with this. Excuse me, I'm going to make a noise this one. No, please do. There please we go. do make a noise. People are obsessed with this, so I mean, this has to be at your picnic. Yeah. Also, let's talk about some picnic tips and things you, you should. Picnic etiquette, if we want to do that, okay? When you're going on a picnic, make sure you have a bag to remove all your Refuse. little bits and bobs. Oh, for sure. Don't rely on the venue you're going to to have bins for you. I mean, they might, but it's just picnic etiquette. Make you sure leave you... with what you brought, yo. I love that. There we go. Okay, so let's start with this guy. So I've been opening this incorrectly the whole time. Okay. So I've just been taking it out and then scooping it. So, you know those little creme caramels? Yeah, you yeah. You push it, turn it upside down, and then you gotta pop it. Get out. Okay? And then you gotta give it a little squeezy I, squeeze. You know, I've been knowing this and having it for years, but you've changed my life forever. I mean, <laughs> I mean. Okay, so what I'm gonna ask you to do is just start. Like, you know how many people have just had an aha moment? I know. I'm hey? gonna, I'm gonna grab, like, I, I, what? I like the way you threw that pack, pack away there because you know we're finishing it. We're finishing it. The, we're then, done. Then okay. Nothing left. So I'm asking you to put a few crackers. I'm gonna get a spoon real quick. Oh, what do I go with? I'm going to kind of go with an equal amount of each because they, yeah, they, they're, really they're cool. all amazing. And I have sanitized profusely. You have. We all have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little chefy smush. Oh, these are my favorite. And the, they've got extra salt like on them? them as well, which Aren't is cool? amazing. Aren't they called Graham Crackers? No? Almost? No? <laughs> Everyone calls Graham Crackers, really. Oh, Graham. <laughs> okay, cool. So we got the little smush down of the beautiful dip. Oh, then you had to give it the chef You have smush. to. You have to. Because we're making it fancy. Like I said, picnics are not like they, they yeah, used yeah, to yeah. be. Okay, Graham, you gone, you gone bonkers. You've gone crackers. You, I'm going to give you three of each. You can okay, move them around. Okay, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Okay. So then I've gone for the cheese selection. And cheese, I feel like, is essential to any picnic. Yes. And we're being a little fancy because we've got this nice variety of cheese. Mm. Oh, by the way, if you want to see where we got all these items from. I mean, you know it's at Woolworths. Oh, yeah. But we just get you your daily difference. Okay. We just picked and matched what we think our favorites are. We know what our favorites are. We use that to build up this beautiful platter. Okay. Are you even using my, my biscuits to prop I up am, the to cheese. prop it up. I like that. Because just like any dish, height is everything. You want to create a bit of height in there. So we got that. I mean, we also got a beautiful uh, sweet which cheese. Which is this? The brie. That's Can the brie. brie. And then we've got the beautiful Sweet cheese with cranberries in there. Ooh. We've got the goat's cheese and a bit of a blue. Yeah, I've got Play to around with it. Yeah, have yeah it. got to have the blue. Then these are new, newish. They came out last year. Mm, I actually had them last weekend. They're delicious, aren't they? They're oh, beautiful. Wow, okay, so it's got the striped and cream cheese rolls. These are nice. So you can kind of like start it off like a little, do starters first. Mm. So you start off with this and then you get Just into the, the palate, get it going. Absolutely. Pack a little bit of lemon. Let the, like a little squeeze of lemon over mm. that. Really make it your own, but be fancy with it. It's like, I mean, we don't, I don't think people do enough picnics. I'm mean, like this year, I think we're going to do more picnics and we're playing around with flavors. So there we go. What have we got? I love so that. So we've got the cheese. We've got the beautiful dip and kind of pick up, do your thing. You've got those little, little salmon, little trout, cream cheese rolls. 
um, hi, the jalapeno poppers. Man, for a little bit of heat. Yeah, even Rudy was like putting that like, cameraman. Rudy was like, yeah, 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 yeah save yeah, that, I'll, save I'll, that, I'll, save I'll, that. I'll, some of those. That's These are delicious. Little, a little bit of warmth on you date know, night. You hey? want a little bit of fuego mm -hmm. on your little romantic Have picnic? You, you got a big man. For <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. For to pop those on the Same. side. These are delicious. These wow. are so good. Wow. There we go. You know, and for, for ages, I've used a, a chili popper to test if a restaurant has got their chops or not. I get you. Huh? I get you. That's the, often the first thing I order is just how they do their chili popper is how I will judge them. Okay, just so you know, all restaurants out there. Okay, uh, you're gonna I, have I get chili you poppers on your menu, but I like this as a as a picnic additive. Right. It doesn't sound very romantic. Additive. Hey. No. Uh, Let's a, see. A, a, pic a picnic nuance. And um, yeah, it's a bit different as well, but we're doing picnics different this year. So what I want to do is just get that, pop those little there. I'm trying to make Roses a rose. Roses of bruschetta. Did I get it? Did, is that a rose? I can't. Uh, yes. It yes, is. it is a rose. So it's so I mean, if you're going to give me Roses. Give me <laughs> roses made out of meat, please. <laughs> Give I'm a simple a, guy. A bunch of meat roses. Okay, there's the other one. Oh. And then you got, obviously, you got your salami and you got the rest of your hams. But what's nice is like, you build up one platter and you can keep on topping it up as you mm. go along. So those are beautiful. You can add more cheeses, absolutely. I always say either one big, beautiful cheese or three, which is your blue cheese, your soft cheese, and then your sharp cheese. Play around with that. Okay. So we're gonna cool. start off with just that one. And that's then, our creamy. So the, the brie and the camembert would be your, your creamy, yeah? Yeah. Okay, it's like slightly lower kind of mm. flavor profile. Cool, I got that. And then what we always say is take your cheese out half an hour before you serve it. Give it a chance to come to room temperature and you get so much more flavor out of that. Mm. You like that? I love okay, it. Okay, I'm gonna get you some drinks. You thirsty? Thanks, I am, I'm very thirsty. It's a hot day. It's a beautiful picnic. You don't want to be parched. I'm gonna get you, when you a, whisper, a cranberry Cosmo. Of sweet love. Okay, I'm gonna go for the blood orange because it is nice. absolutely delicious. I love that. So there we go. Okay, you can have it. You can have this one. Do you want this oh, one? I would yeah. love it. Man. Yeah. I love in anything orange. Everything. Okay. So. Oh, it looks so beautiful. You gonna try man. something? You gonna try something? Okay, cool. While you build, like, you'll pick your little thing. I'm gonna talk about some of these. Mm -hmm. These wheat straw utensils as well. I oh, actually wow. keep this in the car. Because you never know when the snack attack hits and you're going to need know. something, you need some utensils. Mm -hmm. So these are essential. Keep these in your car. Also great for picnics. And then hand wipes and, and sanitizer. Yes, you of course. This. You know this. Well, yeah. I've got a three-year-old, so there's always hand wipes and sanitizer. Anyway, yeah, you've everywhere. got that. Dude, my mouth is watering so much, I'm actually struggling to okay, talk you know, right do you want, now. Okay, do you want a popper? Can I have a popper? We can leave this beautiful Ooh, plate for okay. just now. We'll leave that. I can see. Which one? I think, wait, 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 wait. Okay. You know what? We have haven't done this in a long time. Mm -hmm. Should we get some jalapeno popper seductive music? Please. Please. That's you. Oh. I'm a little oh, intimidated, intimidated by, by that love though. Language, huh? So, um, love your love. Your expression of your love language is amazing. I told you, I'll, I'll do yeah. the popper, bro. You, um, um, you properly popped that popper. Tell me, <laughs> are you impressed with our picnic batter? I am. I told you, I already loved you. Now I'm like, this is it, bro. This is we're, it. we're meant this to is be it. together. Wow, absolutely amazing. And now I'm also like I'm having a romantic engagement. I've got a bit of sweat on my brow. Wow. Like, oh, no. Okay, this is how we're doing picnics in 2021. Cheers, my friend. Well, uh, cheers to you, bro. Uh, no, it's been so like amazing, obviously, what you do. And have the most romantic Valentine's Day. I cannot wait to hear what you are going to do for me. It's going to be amazing, man. I love you guys as well. But baby, I love you. If you heart them, show them. Surprise them with gifts from Woolies. Happy Valentine's Day.
Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> this is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It is the month of love. Yes. And yes, we de- do need to emphasize that word. Why? Because love really does make the world go round. And this morning, we link up with newlyweds, Jared and Kim Ricketts, who are celebrating their first Valentine's together since tying the knot. Yeah, <laughs> of course, this morning. <laughs> I'll see you over there, you lovebirds. Now, this morning, we have a couple of questions for the lads and lasses, of course, the two newlyweds. And we thought we would kick it off by just dying diving straight into the guys. So of course, always a pleasure having you together. You're like a role model when it comes to our espresso couple. I think everybody's just <laughs> inspired by the two of you. So first you've got to ask is that, who was the first one to make the move? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't, it, wasn't it Ian no, sliding to the or, or do you? You tell, the you okay. tell the story. Okay. <laughs> so um, obviously, you know, I know you know that I know Kim since about the age of eight years old, nine yeah. years old, because she's my cousin's best friend, and she was always at parties and stuff. But anyway, um, I, gosh, how did it actually happen? I, I. You texted me. It was still BB. I what did you just slide BB? BB. So I was in Spain performing. And um, I started texting her, saying, hi, how were you? But you know, you have an agenda, you know, uh, how am I going to do this thing <laughs> right? And then you can continue because she knows. She okay, he there. disappears after a few months of chatting, saying, I'm coming home next month. And all of a sudden, no message, Lutic. nothing. Oh. Yeah, no, it was just gone. Eventually, I think it was about a few months later, two months later or three months later, I get this BBM saying, hey, is that you running across the road in Kenilworth? I'm like, how weird are you? You just disappeared. And all of a sudden, I get this message. <laughs> Fast track, um, we then started chatting because I eventually read the message and respond. Um, And I think it was about four months after that. Jared says to me, "Uh, so let's do the coffee. And I'm like, no, no, no. Because now I'm like, I don't want to seem too eager, right? So I go, no, no, no. (laughs) And he says to me, I'm actually going on a date with this other chick tomorrow. Wow. Wow. I knew. That's what he did. That's what he did. Hey, when I did that, she was like, okay, let's go on a coffee date. Oh, wow. So you've got to work with the plan. And here we are today, you know. Um, but essentially, I made the first move and then, but it was still up to Was it reverse psychology? Was that Definitely. Uh, we're going to leave I it at that. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> okay, the next question is, who said I love you first? Wow, I said I love you first, you right? You did, you did. Yeah, and it was the weirdest thing because when you, f- when, when I started engaging with Kim and we started uh, dating, you know, I just was so mesmerized, you know, and I think <laughs> then I knew this is the woman that I'm going to marry. There was just something about her. I don't know if it's in her eyes or the, she's very caring, she's very kind. And I said, I, I could do this for the rest of my life, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. <laughs> and then I think I was, I just said it you one did? day, uh, randomly. And she was like, uh, and that's the thing with love is that <laughs> for her, she also had to warm up to that. So maybe yeah. I was a little bit too <laughs> out there with saying that. He was ready. He was all in. He's like, I'm, re- I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. And so, yeah. So Jared was the first to sell out. So then let me ask you this, all right? So once you've said the I love yous, you've said the I do's, I do's and we're moving on. Do you ever get that moment and you often, I, I don't know, you'd see it in a movie and in my version would be if I was looking across at my partner and saw them preparing a protein shake and packing my a speedo for adventure, I'd be like, <laughs> oh, you know, I, I just fall for that moment and I'd be like, I love you. Do you have a moment like that where you I, just like stay? I don't like, think I, it's I, in my school, oh, you know, though. No. That's I, not I, a moment I, I, for I me. I do, though. I honestly do. And it's the weirdest thing. So because I also manage Jared, I usually go with him to, well, most of the time I'm with him at gigs. And I sit there and I find myself just having this silly smile on my face as soon as he sings, just going, like, after I've packed the bag. Yeah. And I'm just like, yes, I love all of that. Oh. <laughs> like, That's my man. That's my yes. man. <laughs> What's the most romantic thing he's ever done for you? Besides the proposal, uh, what is that one thing that makes you go, like, oh? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 the most romantic thing. I think there's quite a few and that's why I'm like, oh, which one? Jared knows that I am super busy at work and even before lockdown. So the one thing that he really does is he really takes care of me in in the sense of cooks. So he'll bring me lunch, he'll bring me snacks and he'll always get me to that point of, it's time to finish now, this is the time, let's go for that walk. And I think I need that specifically in terms of the career and being busy. So I think the most romantic thing is just reminding me that I need to take care of Mm. myself too. And 
the fact that it means so much to him to take care of me, I, I think that's the most romantic thing. Oh, I, I told you, inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you guys this. Let's, let's have a little bit of fun. So obviously we've asked him, Zanzi, what your song would be if you could sing it to your loved one. So Jared, being the singer that you are and you have one song, I know you've got millions of choices, but ah. to serenade ah. your wife, your woman, to your marinate princess, my wife. to marinate <laughs> <With> music, <laughs> what would it be? And <laughs> <laughs> what song would that be? What would it be? And give us a little line. Gosh, of come on. <clears throat> you know me, I'm always prepared. Yeah, this mm, is always. Do you like to <laughs> can I help you out? <laughs> all of me loves all of you. I love your curves and all your benches, all your perfect imperfections. You give moment and I saw it right now you were staying in his eyes and you know what guys it's not just the music I want to do something for her today so I got a little something I oh we got more so. surprises from Zanzi surprise. my, my I don't know what's going on right now courtesy Jamie you got a heads up yeah please? well Jared I believe you do have a surprise courtesy of Expresso oh, Woody's and yourself please uh, tell us what it is Listen, so on behalf of Expresso and myself, we just want to say thank you for who you are and who you are to me. Okay. And I'm so proud of you today for sitting on this couch and sharing what you know. That's the kind of person she is. She wants to give of herself all the time. And I'm proud of you for, for stepping into your light. And because you do that, you encourage me to do the same. I love you so much. Thank you, my love. I'm like, you I want you, but thank you. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Oh, much love out here. Too much. She's got makeup on her face and she doesn't want to give the whole smooch thing, you know? Thank you so uh, much guys the records ladies and gentlemen so beautiful to be able to connect with, the, uh, with them this morning also hear their love story of course we're still celebrating the month of love and also the week of love and here is some more uh, Valentine's ideas with Uncle Ted's coming <laughs> Danielle <laughs> oh there you are guys <laughs> oh man the joys of love and celebrating the month of love but it starts with setting the tone and setting the experience and the mood right which you certainly have done for, for you us. baby for me for <laughs> us danielle well we know that coming up with ideas on how to surprise someone special on valentine's day doesn't have to be a daunting task i, I promise you it doesn't have to be uh, well we could all learn a thing or two from jared ricketts uh, you know it seems he's got a lot of tricks up his sleeves our homeware editor danielle weekly is here to show us how easy creating a romantic picnic is and i mean look at this without song without yeah. song okay so you're not gonna sing i'm, 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 I'm sorry should hold my breath for that but wow danielle this is really stunning and it's really special in fact <laughs> food <laughs> chef Clem, please i feel like i'm intruding so i'm gonna just put this down and just leave very oh, quickly thank you so much thank you thank, thank you thank you, you, thank you very you much and this <laughs> My, Let me guess, I have to take offering. it off. That's so kind of you, thank you. <laughs> take it. Well, this looks really good. But Danielle, the thing is, setting up uh, the perfect uh, mood and the right environment starts with a bit of thought. Right. How do we set up a picnic at home without our partner getting suspicious? Because, I mean, I didn't suspect a thing, Danielle, nothing. when you, you set all nothing. of this up. I, I just arrived and I was like, <laughs> what? For me? <laughs> For us? For Valentine's? <sighs> How do you do that? That's, that's obviously exactly the reaction I was going for, right? Okay. Mm. So I think the easiest thing to do while you nibble on your Valentine's chili popper mm. 
is to find things that you have at home for a start. Mm. I think it's the only way of kind of truly trying to fake a lounge picnic and I'm all for a lounge picnic. I think there's a bit of romance involved Correct. with being bringing up like fur throws and lots of scatter cushions okay. and a couple of candles. And despite the fact that it looks like I have spent days putting this together, mm -hmm. I think that it's a very easy and simple thing to throw together in your lounge with stuff you already have. Everyone does have a throw on their couch somewhere. Sometimes you have a throw you bought last year that you haven't used in a while. No, because it's summer. Exactly. So cost per wear on the throw is excellent for Valentine's Day. Absolutely. And then your cushions and all of that for that comfort, which becomes very important because you're actually not doing it for pictures. You are doing it for... No, and you want to be able to lay. You want to be laying on it. It's a like a lays. slow romantic evening. I absolutely love it. So top tips in yes. terms of then what to, you know, uh, how to bring it to life then. Now okay. it's set. You've got the different pieces on, but then it must come to life as part of... So you know, it comes to life with the person you choose, obviously. But if that... Okay, so because you have multiple yes. options. Yes. People Many to options to choose from. <laughs> um, I love pulling candles in, mm. but what I love about using candles in a setup like this mm. is finding other reflective surfaces. Mm. So a beautiful little metal tray, you'll see the vases and things that I've so carefully chosen for your flowers for Valentine's Day yes. are all metallic or mirrored. So it all reflects light. So oh, imagine this sort of darker and in nice. the evening and everything kind of starts reflecting off each other with the surfaces, glassware, always having crystal glassware rather than kind of like sensible stuff yeah. is a good place to start. Well, it seems you've also, I think there's a lot of sustainability as a theme that I'm seeing that's coming through. Yeah. What is the story with sustainability? So I think for me, I just really love the idea of creating a picnic, the picnic, picnic. That, uh, you know, one of a those. Pic that ticks all the boxes. It ticks a pic -tick. the boxes. I love it. That didn't feel outdoorsy. Mm. So I loved all the sustainable wood that was coming through. And I, I really love those because they kind of feel a little bit more masculine. It's not yeah. kind of your traditional pink, hearty, glittery kind that's of a it. Valentine's picnic. That's it. Um, that's got beautiful leather accents. There's lots of wood. There's lots of metals. And I think that that mm. kind of has a great feel to it that feels a little bit different to picnic. Ah, this and a little bit hotter. Is stunning. It, it hot starts nice and warm and then it gets really hot yeah. in love. This is really beautiful. Um, uh, what's the main difference between how you would put together a picnic, <laughs> picnic uh, my own uh, personal for, your, yes. uh, for two people as opposed to you know the sort of traditional mainstream uh, family uh, uh, picnic yeah gather. so nobody wants family around on valentine's day first uh, ideally, i mean as much as ideally, you love your mom I'd, yeah no, i don't just... think that your girlfriend or your wife wants to have your mom there the no. whole night maybe mom can like be there to help with the cushions but uh, i think otherwise... the great part about making an intimate picnic is mm. already setting it up for two so that it mm. feels contained. Mm -hmm. So you've already got like beautiful little table settings. So it's almost as if you were like dinner adieu, mm -hmm. but you're having it on the floor mm. in your own little space. Mm -hmm. um, I would put the TV onto like one of those flaming fiery Ooh. images mm. just to kind of, we can't boil by actually because having the summer, fire, right? I mean, exactly. I'm not going to put the so fireplace on. That might take away from the Laying the scene, scented candles, mm. and then pulling it all together by having it laid for two. I think that's what makes it feel something that's a little bit more special and a bit more romantic mm -hmm. and not kind of the great big bright place, bourgeois, cheerfulness, mm -hmm. and the color palette also helps. It's not the cherry picnic-y stuff. I love your work. Oh, and my beautiful food presented by my personal chef, chef obviously. Chef Clem. If you don't have a personal <laughs> chef, well, Chef Clem's taken us all through the recipe to show us how Woody's has made it so, so easy for all of us. Uh, would you like to nibble on something? Uh, thank you. I will not take the chili popper, but I will have one of these because I've been eyeing them for my own Valentine's. I thank love you. that. <laughs> well, Danielle has shown us that sustainability is the way to go. And who knew that you can really create a romantic picnic or call it a picnic uh, with deco items? <laughs> items that you already do own, that you already do have in your own home. Go out there, man. Spoil someone special this Valentine's Day. Whether you are a lady or a gent, you can really put it together for two and make it really special. And if you need a new scatter or picnic essentials, make sure to get it online, in store or on the Woolies app, or you can go into the Woolies uh, store and find those. Everything here just comes together and makes so, so much sense. But it seems very easy to come to, uh, to bring it together as well. So easy. Which I absolutely love. So. Cheers. Cheers, baby. Happy Valentine's, Happy baby. Happy Valentine's. Happy Valentine's, baby. <laughs> baby.
It's my feel good breakfast show. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, have you finished eating yet? Oh, that was dude? so nice, guys. <laughs> I mean, oh, I was so nice. Like uh, really yeah. salivating <laughs> from this end of the building. We were jealous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've, 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 I've also got a handful or two. Hopefully you are, are, are feeling inspired for the month of love. Well, being this month, it is a special one because we have celebrated some very special birthdays mm. this month and we love celebrating them with you, our viewers. We love it even more when we get to celebrate it with people that we um, really love and appreciate. And this next person is someone that... I obviously have worked with him for a, a number of years and I, I appreciate his counsel in the workspace um, more than I, I can possibly say. He's an absolute <laughs> gen. Uh, he, he works us really hard, um, but I don't think this ship would be able to function without him. But I think on a personal note, he is someone that I appreciate his counsel far more. He is someone so special to me and so special to this team. Lucian Albertain is celebrating a oh. very special Happy birthday. Hey. Love it. <laughs> Happy birthday, Lucian Albertain. Of course, I mean, you've seen him lots of times bring the chies to the studio when we do our Friday dances. He really does uh, bring so much life here. I mean, and look at that big boss cup there. And he really does <laughs> run this floor like the boss that he is. It's absolutely stunning. And a special human, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, a good guy, good man. Happy birthday, Lucian. Oh, Lucian. And I'll say okay, it again. Clap. Okay, he wants to sit left now. Okay, he's a slap for me. Ah, you gotta love it. I'll say it again. Lucian is the glue that holds the show Absolutely. together. Undoubted. He is unbelievable. He's strict at times, but mm -hmm. he does what at needs to be done. And you know what I like? <laughs> 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 and you know what's funny? His dad's a pastor, and they say, I'll take the pastor's kind of his stoutste. Indeed, indeed, indeed. I could not agree. I couldn't agree with you more, Joey, but the fact that he just makes us all smile when yeah. we come into the studio and the energy in here is like Tub says, yeah. that he does give it enough to just put absolute magic on your dial no matter what time of the morning you open up. So Lush, thank you so much. We love you, like brother. We, we love you. And I, I want to put birthday, it out boy. there, and it must be put out there that every single dance move you've seen me do on the show here, <laughs> I learn of? from <laughs> uh, Lush. He's forced me to do it. Yeah, yeah. And, and I have often, yes, been forced uh, to do any dancing you see on the show. We've actually been forced and <laughs> by Lush to do it. So no, we we, love, we love you, Lush. If you are celebrating a birthday at home, you are in very good company today. Mm. So happy birthday to you as well. We love you. Mm. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Michelle! And everybody else. <laughs> Oh, we definitely love you, Lucian. He is the shadiest person ever, but he keeps us together. And I mean, what would Express a Morning Show be without you? So we do love you. But of course, we are back with singer and TV presenter, Rochelle Liederman, who will be joined by gospel singing sensation and very good friend of ours, Jared Ricketts, to perform the gospel hit, Open the Eyes of My Heart. I think this well-known praise and worship song with its beautiful lyrics really re reflect what is written in the book of Ephesians in the Holy Bible and talks of opening your heart to the Almighty. So, guys, the stage is yours. At home, if you know this, I want you to sing along with us. Let's keep praising glory to God.
two amazing yeah. voices. Hopefully that's got you. Hopefully this whole show has got you into the spirit of love. Pumped, Pumped for love. We've eaten a lot today. <laughs> okay, so I'm guessing yeah. that's going to be a sign. Our love language <laughs> clearly on this show <laughs> is food. And hopefully we've given you some inspiration there as well. Mm -hmm. um, how cool is Rob yeah, today? Yeah, what a legend, oh, man. Talk about inspiration. Hikes he's a na he's, I'm nature boy. He's nature man. Yeah. 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 You'll get there one day. One day. So you'll one get day. there one day. He's become my new spirit animal. Um, and, and Rob, incidentally, if you didn't catch that interview earlier, he has summited Table Mountain a thousand oh. times. My word. Thousand 71 times. years old. My word. Wow. Imagine that. 71. Yeah, and Tubbs, you're still going for one, eh? I haven't <laughs> even done one. <laughs> you need to. A little touch of anything to do with Table Mountain. That is just embarrassing. I must up my game. You <laughs> definitely. You definitely. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, I want you to, to prepare for tomorrow because it's going to be a special day. Yo! Special special game. Game. Special we, we love game. a little bit of karaoke <laughs> on the show. Now I'm going to connect with another spirit animal of mine. I love it. Uh, <laughs> live Can I get you to warm up? Give us a taste. Um, Britney Spears oh. will be live oh, on the baby, show tomorrow. Baby. So make sure you tune oh. in. <laughs> We're ready for We that. love you. <laughs> we'll wow. see you tomorrow, <laughs> man. Adios. Bye -bye. <laughs>